great things are achieved when people come together. The strength of one becomes the strength of thousands, and aspirations beyond belief can be achieved. We got family. We got family. So when I hug you, I get jolly. A community exists to give everyone a voice, to give everyone belief. And if a community shares the same goals, anything can happen. Communities League Cup Final, Celtic v Kilmarnock. The annual Scottish football prize giving starts right here. It's the Scottish Communities League Cup Final here at Hampden, with Celtic and Kilmarnock looking to get their hands on the first silverware of the Scottish season. It's live on the BBC. Kenny Shields and his Kilmarnock team have arrived here at the National Stadium for their big day out. They've had lots of plaudits for the way they play. Can they upset the odds? For Neil Lennon's Celtic, this could be the first step towards a treble. They're in the last four of the Scottish Cup and they could clinch the title as early as next weekend. They're looking to extend an unbeaten run in domestic football, which has stretched for 26 matches. Celtic and Kilmarnock getting ready for the League Cup final. And with me in the studio, the former Celtic striker John Hartson is here. Scotland manager Craig Levine with us as well. And former Kilmarnock winger Pat Nevin completes our studio lineup. Seems perfectly balanced to me. Let's get the team's former Kilmarnock defender Craig Patterson in the commentary box alongside Liam McLeod. Rob, thank you. Fantastic day for it actually in Glasgow's south side. And Celtic, of course, looking, as you've just been saying, they are to continue this unbelievable domestic record that stretches back to the beginning of October when they lost at Tynecastle against Hearts and looking for what they hope as well will be the first of a domestic treble. And starting against Kilmarnock this afternoon, but it's a very, very familiar-looking Celtic side, that one, Craig, isn't it? Such a strong side, such a strong squad. Georgios Samaras can only find a place on the bench. They're on a fantastic run, and that is why they are red-hot favourites to lift the first trophy of the season. Kilmarnock have been up and down all season, really. Bit patchy form-wise just now as well, aren't they? Well, I think when they defend well, they play well, and they get results. They've managed to beat Rangers home and away. They've drawn with Celtic. They went down narrowly at Parkhead. If they bring their A game today, they're capable of producing a shock. Well, if they do bring their A game and do manage to beat Celtic this afternoon, it would be the first time they've won the League Cup. Celtic looking for a 15th success. We'll find out who in about, what, 25 minutes or so. Yep, I think you're about right. Uh, there's one SPL game being played already today before we get down to business here. It was a but let's talk about the, the big match here, John. And looking at that Celtic lineup, was maybe the only big decision for Neil Lennon about whether he would play Giorgio Samaras or not? Yeah, well, he's played all three. You know, he's played Samaras on the left many times this season with Stokes and Hooper up front. He's decided to leave Samaras on the bench today. Um, he's gone in with a strong midfield with, with Joe Ledley on the left. Joe Ledley could have gone left back, but he'll play left, left side midfield now with Mulgrew uh, at left back, which gives him a little bit of height as well. But uh, Samaras is fresh. If he needs him, then I'm sure he can come off the bench. Will Kilmarnock come here part with the, the only plan they know, which is to play passing football? Um, yeah, I think they must do. There's no point in them changing their style. Um, if they do play more defensively, I, I think Celtic have so much firepower for them. But uh, it's easy to say, come and want to play that way. The problem is you might not be able to because the power of Celtic, if they play very well, you might not be able to stop them. You, you end up falling back just naturally. Um, it's worrying, I think, for Kilmarnock just now, except the fact that there's no expectation of it. 
Craig, you come here with the betting prowess you displayed at Cheltenham in the, in the <laughs> last week. Would your money today be going anywhere other than on Celtic? Yeah, two horse race, so <laughs> yeah, Celtic are, are worthy favourites. Um, there are certain things that Kilmarnock need to do very well today to give themselves a chance. And you know, one of them that they're actually, you know, it's part of the game plan, which is ball retention, and uh, they need to be able to keep possession of the ball, particularly early in the match. You don't want to continually cough it up and have Celtic have wave after wave of attack. An early goal for Celtic, I mean, it sounds silly, but an early goal for Celtic almost finishes the game, I believe. I think Kilmarnock need to stay in the game for as long as possible and give their good players, the guys who are capable of scoring goals or creating chances, give them chances to get in that last third of the pitch and see if they can get a goal. We know the league is a foregone conclusion now, but it's just one trophy at a time and I think when you get a little bit too ahead of yourself and you start thinking about talk about trebles and everything else, the fans will talk about it because they're getting very, very excited. But uh, that's when you slip up, so it'll be one trophy at a time from Celtic. We saw the bleached head of Neil Lennon there, the player lifting his first trophy uh, on the way to 10 winners medals. Phenomenal uh, rate of success. Does, does managing expectations as a player in a treble season, Craig, help you when you get into the management level? Yeah, Neil's progressing tremendously well as a, as a manager, it's been, it's been proven this season. But it's another thing for him to cope with, if you understand. I mean, uh, here's a, a situation where for, the, for, the, for both old firm teams, the treble seasons are, you know, they're very, very important things. So he has to manage his team's expectations. He has to manage his own expectations. Um, and he's in a job where, he, he, you know, you don't get to make mistakes. You know, has, everything has to be done properly. Um, you know, I really must commend him on, on where he's got his team to uh, this season. And, and for me, I know the players won't talk about trebles, but for me, John said it, the league's finished. Mm. Uh, this game here, they're long odds on favourites, and they are strong favourites to win the Scottish Cup. You know, it, it's just focus now, isn't it? It's just it keeping is. them, yeah. you know, 100% focused on the game in hand and not let their, their minds drift to other things. And do Kalonic part have to hope simply that Celtic have a bad day? That's a really interesting point. You say that I hope they have a bad day, and that's exactly what you'd normally say in that situation. But I've watched Celtic have a few bad days recently, and they still tend to win. And that's what's special about this Celtic team just now. So they almost have to have a very, very bad day. And I've just not seen too many of them from Celtic just now. What come on, I have to make sure they do? Two centre backs, Nelson Sissoko against Stokes and Hooper. They need to win that battle, and that's a tough battle to win. Maybe Mother's Day, but it could be Father's Day for a Kilmarnock manager, Kenny Shields, if his son Dean turns out to be the Hamden match winner here today, as he was in the semi-final. Chris McLaughlin has been speaking to both Shields Jr. and Shields Sr. I'm not here to be popular, I'm here to be successful for Kilmarnock Football Club. The Shields family album for this season reveals an interesting picture. And if I'm asked a question from the media, it's important that I'm straight with those guys because they have a job to do as well. Manager Kenny Shields has been making headlines off the pitch. His son has been making them on it. The fact that the manager is your father, obviously there's a connection there, a relationship before, beforehand and, and off the pitch, there's a relationship there. But in training and in during games, it's, it's a professional business and there's no room for, um, for anything else other than to be totally professional. This is a family club and to try and treat everyone the same as if they're all your sons, there's no difference. I think the way that, that he wants to play the game suits the way I want to play on the pitch and the way he wants his teams to, to set up and, and taking away the fact that he is my father, I needed to look at, uh, this, at the start of the season to find a team that was going to suit the way I played and, and um, I've managed to do that with command. But will strong family values be enough to beat Celtic? There's a lot of pressure in Celtic because of the treble. If the Celtic players don't perform the way they know they can, the treble could be gone. Small group. Oh, it's a terrible back pass! And this is quite remarkable! They've certainly got weaknesses and they talk about them being unplayable. I think that there's been times when they've, they've been terrible this season, you know? and I'm sure Neil Lennon will admit that himself and we've got to hope that we catch them on an off day and, and, and we're on it. Our players, I can't answer the question if they'll freeze in the day. It's important that they don't and we'll be doing everything to make sure that they don't. 80 minutes away from winning a trophy, I don't think there'll be too many players needing to be cheered up or, or motivated into giving 100%. I think that's, 
that's a given on a, on a, in any cup final. If they're really hot on the day, they'll, they'll win the cup. We, we can't deny that. But we're going to go there and, and play and, and one thing we will do is we'll, we'll come out and play. We'll, Celtic will look forward to playing us because they'll know that it's going to be a decent game of football and there'll be two teams trying to win the match. I can't imagine they're always that serious, those two, when they get together, father and son, uh, Kenny and, and Dean Shields. He is a bit of a character, Craig, isn't he? What, what, what do, you, do you make of him? He, he provokes different reactions from different people, doesn't he? I think he's, he's, a, he's a very honest guy, and he, and he says what he thinks. And uh, sometimes we bite our tongue and, and don't say what we think, and I think that's one thing about Kenny. We'll come out, and if he, if he feels something, then he'll just say it, you know? And, uh, for you guys in the media, um, I mean, he's, he's great value for money, and um, I think he's been a breath of fresh air. I mean, the, the, the football under Mixu was really good. Mixu kind of started the way they played, and he's continued. It's probably the reason why he got the job. He's continued the way that Kilmarnock play, and uh, you know, I, I, I like him. You know, I think he's a decent guy, and uh, he's good entertainment. And he's played down Kilmarnock's prospects here today, Pat, hasn't he? Which I suppose you would expect him to do privately. He'll be thinking something else. Well, for a variety of reasons, there's a bit of mind games going on there. I think we all agreed with this beforehand. We all said, yeah, I'll be saying to Neil Lennon, you know, you guys relax and you'll win this easily. Um, and also, I think there's a bit of an aim towards his, his own players as well, just saying, just relax, enjoy yourself. You have to play a relaxed game. Now, the hope I would give to the Kilmarnock fans, it's not that 3-0, you'd expect the 3-0, you know, up at half-time in that previous game we saw there. But in actual fact, the last game at Celtic Park, when uh, Celtic won 2-1, uh, I think Kilmarnock were by a for about 60 minutes by a long way the better team. They played brilliantly that day, they came out, they were, they were fearless, they passed the ball brilliantly and it was another one of those games where Celtic weren't playing particularly well but managed to get the points. But if Kelly go out and play with that belief again and pass it and, and every one of their players buys into it, that's their only chance that they've got and the only way they'll do that is if their manager is confident with them. So see all the things in the press that you hear, but down there, and I think we know already, he's very relaxed down there, he knows there's no pressure in him and he's trying to make sure these players feel that as well. How do you get at Celtic, John? What, what, will, what will his philosophy be? What, what, what are the weak areas within Celtic in which you can hurt them? Well, there are no weaknesses really, but for me, <coughs> Kilmarnock needs, every single player needs to be on, on his A game today and to play well, not to get nervous, want the ball in tight areas, play, show people what a good player you are, don't be too intimidated by your opposition number, um, show them respect off the pitch but when you cross that white line you've, you, you've, you've got to feel you're as good as them. Uh, Kenny Shields will be saying go and enjoy it. Then Kilmarnock are not expected to win the game today, you know they're expected for Celtic to, to go and win the game quite comfortable really. So we'll be saying go and enjoy it, enjoy the occasion but have no regrets. Come off that pitch at the end of the game, not thinking, I could have done this, I could have done that. I wish I tracked a runner, or oh, I just switched off for a second. Concentrate for 90 minutes, and it's a cup final, and anything can happen, as we've seen many times before. Seeing Paul Heffernan's name on the team sheet, I guess, will give Kilmarnock a psychological boost. Craig, uh, 13 goals this season, only three of them since the turn of the year. But, but he's a smart player, isn't he? Yeah, and it's... it's it's an important issue for the rest of the players in the team, knowing they've got somebody in the, the team who can score goals. Um, you know, I played for a long time at Hearts with John Robertson. You know, if Rob, Rob got a chance, he would he would score, and the amount of times he would dig you out a difficult situation. It's happened with Hooper and and uh, and Stokes at times. Um, and, and he's he's got a good history of scoring goals. He played in the, the lower leagues in England, um, and, and invariably takes. Opportunities. What I think is interesting today in the two lineups will be the will be Heffernan uh, ultimately, but that extra man in midfield that Kilmarnock have got. Um, I, I think if they can get Harkins on the ball, and I think Harkins fed that ball through there to, to Heffernan, if they can get him on the ball in the last third of the pitch, Heffernan is a clever player. He will make those little off the shoulder runs and he can be fed in. Then he will get an opportunity to score a goal and we'll see if, if he can manage it. They've got to get people up to support Heffernan. I, I played in that role for my country many of the times, playing one up front. It's, it's a great position if you've got the ball 
and you're in possession. When you haven't got possession and you're up, against, you're up there against two big centre-halves, you've got to get people picking up the second ball. Heffernan needs support, he'll need Shields, he'll need Harkins to get up and support him. Otherwise, it's a very lonely role if it's not going well for you. Yeah, he scores goals, Heffernan, and, and he does have that ability, doesn't he, as well, to bring other people into the play. And, and that, that's maybe key for Kilmarnock today, as we've been saying, can Harkins and Dean Shields get involved? And that's the only way they're going to get a hold of that cup. And, uh, you know, they'll need to be brave, just like the people who are bringing this cup out today will be brave. Um, and I think, going forward, that's what they have got. They've got, you know, Heffernan has got the brave and the belief. Uh, I also think Shields, let's not ignore and forget the fact that Shields is an important player for, uh, for Kilmarnock and is an intelligent player as well. So, front three, they're intelligent when they're working together, if they can get in the last third, just as Craig said earlier. Just looking at the Celtic lineup, John, the, the name of Charlie McGrew jumps out at me. We, we talk about transformation in Celtic's fortunes this season yeah. from an individual point of view, and he, he was in Craig's squad yeah. for the last game, he was in Craig's team for the last game. <coughs> Charlie McGrew, what a player he's become. He has, he's become a very important member, and he's a player that can play, Rob, in, in, I'm sure Craig will appreciate this. He can play in a number of positions. You know, he can play pushed up, he can play in, in midfield, he can play centre half, he can play left back. Wonderful, wonderful left foot, uh, a wand of a left foot, takes great dead ball situations. I was with Charlie, as he was a young lad at Celtic when I was there, he moved to Aberdeen and he's responded, he's come back, he said, hey, I can play for Celtic and he's shown, I've not a spell at Aberdeen, that he can come back and he's now one of the first names on, on Neil Lennon's uh, team sheet. James Forrest is another name to excite us, uh, Craig, not just in terms of what might happen here today, but, but his Scotland future. Yeah, the most exciting thing for me to come out of our last match was, was James, uh, his performance. Um, he, not, not just in, in the game itself, but in training, he showed himself to be at least at, at the same level as the other players, which is important when you watch them, uh, the young lads coming in. And he showed a, con a confidence and maturity, and his technical ability and his pace and all those things aren't in doubt. But his decision making, his maturity, were things that I was was hugely impressed by, and and for me, he's now made that jump from into under 21 football, even though he's still a young lad, up into the full international scene. It's when you start listing the Celtic names and start discussing them, Pat, that you realise the the scale of the task facing Kilmarnock here today. Uh, and that's what I say. That the, the word that keeps coming back to me is fear. I mean, I, I, when I came back up to Scotland, I felt playing most of my career in England. The Kelly lads that I were playing were, I, I really liked what they, they showed me every week. And then one week we went to, for the first time, Celtic Park, and I looked around and some of those boys looked fearful to me. And I hadn't come across that in my career before because it's just not something you're used to. And that is the power of Rangers in the past and hopefully in the future again at some point, but Celtic as well. And they don't seem to me to have that fear, even though they are those big names you talk about, yes. Slightly, if I could go back a wee bit to Forrest as well, obviously someone who played in the wing, it's, it's a joy to watch him, it's fantastic what he's bringing to the game just now. And he is one of those players that I'm not happy that you say the fact he's making the good decisions, because I think that's what we all know about the wingers. The last thing they learn <laughs> is to go, when to get rid of the ball. I'm hoping they learn it quite soon. When I, when I interviewed uh, Neil Lennon on Friday, I asked him about whether, in going into the last two months of the season, the business end, you had to refocus on getting the big prizes that are now up for grabs. His <coughs> response to me, naturally enough, I suppose, well, why change anything? Because you're in the, they're in the midst of this incredible run. Yeah, well, if it's not broken, don't fix it, as they say, you know. And uh, the good thing is, from Neil's point of view, he's got players of equal ability that can come in. He's got Key that could come into that midfield and slot in quite comfortable. Samaras knows his way around the football pitch, knows his way, you know, uh, in terms of where he plays. So Neil's got options, and um, and there is no need to change anything. As I said, they're on the they're on the, the the cusp of doing something very very special. The treble they don't come around too often, but it's one trophy at a time, and uh, obviously starting with today, but a very important match for Celtic and obviously Kilmarnock today. It's the Scottish Community's League Cup final at Celtic against Kilmarnock and we're almost there. Celtic will look forward to playing us because they'll know that it's going to be a decent game of football and there'll be two teams trying to win the match. The thought of losing the cup final last year is a huge motivation for me. The aspirations beyond belief can be achieved. Scottish Communities League Cup Final. Your commentary team, former Kilmarnock defender Craig Patterson and firstly, Liam McLeod. 
Rob, thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Celtic eyeing up a treble. A fourth in the club's history would be a first in 11 years. The first of their trophies in what was Martin O'Neill's debut season in charge was the one they are hoping to end the day with today. Their opponents in 2001 were also Kilmarnock. And the school of thought is that with the league title signed and sealed and all but delivered, Neil Lennon is three games away from a piece of history. The, what they hope will be three Hamden dates, including this afternoon, the Scottish Cup semi-final next month against Hearts or St Mirren, and the final of that competition in May. Kilmarnock have been up and down all season, going from the sublime in two wins over Rangers, including at Ibrox, to results such as a 6-3 home defeat in Inverness, Cali Thistle. Those who've come up the M77 to the National Stadium will be hoping on an improvement on their last two League Cup finals when they were destroyed by a Henrik Larsson hat-trick in 2001 and the even worse beating dished out to them by John Collins Hibernian, including the current Celtic skipper Scott Brown. That was in 2007 when he came here and lost 5-1. seen all set then Neil Lennon what an afternoon this is for him and his compatriot fellow Northern Irishman Kenny Shields of Kilmarnock in his first full season in charge of the club he has led them to a National Cup final Craig Patterson with me Craig this is going to be some afternoon in particular for those, I suppose, who haven't played at the National Stadium before in a final. Well, it's a fantastic occasion to be, you know, just to be here, to be involved. Players are going to love this, but you want to go home with a winner's medal, which means you've got to go out and perform. I think we know Celtic will because of the way they are playing. The Kelly players have got to get in the face and match up, especially at the start of the game. Very familiar looking Celtic lineup that one, isn't it? Kelvin Wilson returns to the side this afternoon. Joe Ledley moves back into midfield. Stokes and Hooper up front have 40 goals between them this season. It is such a strong lineup. Georgia Samaras reduced their place on the bench, and without him, Forrest, Hooper, and Stokes, so much firepower. Liam Kelly has an important role as the sitting midfielder. Dean Shields got them here with his goal against Thayer in the semis. He'll do his best to support top scorer Paul Heffernan, who has made it. Yeah, well, that's a big plus, Heffernan in the team. But Gary Harkins, Dean Shields must get up in support. And Gary Hay, he has to help out Ben Gordon to nullify the threat of James Horace. Well, as Craig mentioned, Georgia Samaras is out of the starting lineup onto the bench. He goes. James Dayton can cause problems if it's not going Kilmarnock's way later on. Willie Collins has been waiting to take charge of his first final. He gets that chance today. The 33 year old teacher has reft Edinburgh and Old Firm Derbies and the 2012 League Cup final will now sit alongside those on his CV. The 66th League Cup final is about to start. Celtic looking for a 15th success in this competition. Killy yet to taste League Cup success. They have an opportunity this afternoon. They've had opportunities in the last 10, 11 years. It hasn't happened for them. Saturday, the 15th of October, was the moment of Celtic season so far. It may only have been a point that they picked up against today's opponents in Rugby Park, but coming from 3-0 down at half-time that autumn afternoon has instilled something in this Celtic squad. That game immediately followed their last domestic defeat. That came at Tynecastle against Hearts. Neil Lennon since gone on to say that he may well have quit had they not come back to salvage that 3-3 draw in Ayrshire. Now the Celtic boss stands on the edge of greatness. Kelly will do their best to try and prevent that from happening, at least the treble. And it's with Sissoko. On loan a second time from Udinese. James Forrest. First real chance for Forrest to run that wing. A slip from Forrest, but Celtic give it back with Wanyama. been brilliant for Celtic this season, Victor Wanyama in the 
engine room can also play at centre half and has done. Muldrew. Hooper, Brown, Hooper, Brown. Kind of a crack here. Well worth an effort early in the game. Got the lovely little one twos and uh, when he got a look at the goal, Scott Brown, who has been in good goal scoring form recently, wasn't shy about letting fly. Five goals this season, Scott Brown's a good return for him. Four of those came in a row. Soko beat Stokes to it, Ledley. Ledley got the Celtic goal in the League Cup final defeat against Rangers a year ago. Soko keeps his eye on it. Kilmarnock centre half will be tested to the full this afternoon. Brown breaking the ball for Celtic. Well, Liam Kelly was there and we're highlighting how important a job he's going to have just in front of the centre half and it's before the midfield. Well, he's going to sit there and he's got to protect centre backs. He's got to stop balls into feet because Stokes and Hooper, some of the link up is terrific. You've got to deny them possession. Fowler's looking for Heffernan. Rodna was covering and Forster gets a first touch. Matthews. Movement from Stokes again, but Sissoko's marshalled him well in the opening few minutes. And I suppose the good thing about the pitch being watered just before the game is there's a nice skip on the ball. If you're a defender, you know it's going to go through quickly to the goalkeeper. Sissoko took up a good position. Four changes in the Kilmarnock lineup today from the one that drew up at Inverness last weekend. Fowler and Hay back into the team, Shields and Heffern and four massive players for Kenny Shields today. Hey. Chance here then for Kilmarnock just to stay in the ball, look a few passes together because they'll want to get some confidence instilled into them looking ahead. Well, they know the early part of the game. You can't win it, but you can lose it. You know, you lose yourself a oh, goal. Oh, Sissoko's given that straight to Hooper. Good save from Bell. Oh, he's bailed out Sissoko there, big time. I have no idea what the centre-back is thinking about. Early in the game, I'm just about to say, take no chances, clear your lines, passes it straight to Gary Hooper, and he should score. Chances do not come any better. Talking about instilling confidence. I was doing exactly the opposite from Sissoko there. Bell, who's been in terrific form in the Kilmarnock goal once again. He was out quickly to smother the Hooper effort, but he had to put money on Gary Hooper, who's still looking up at the heavens. Can't believe he's not taking that chance. I can't, but I think he was surprised at having the ball pass straight to him. Kilmarnock give away far too many cheap goals. In a cup final, you can't afford to, and there's a lesson. Don't do it again. Shields. Pinched off him by Forrest, but Shields bites back at him. He to Hepburn. Hey. Smothered away by Joe Ledley. Hooper. Forrest, he's got Stokes ahead of him. Hooper waiting in the middle for the Stokes cross. Nelson's there for Kilmarnock. And cleared by Gordon. Celtic comfortable on the ball. Forrest. Adam Matthews, we're going to pick out Brown, it was a great run from the midfield by Brown, Sissoko got in the way and Celtic have a first corner of the afternoon. And Celtic are just trying to lift the pace a little, get balls into the box, but they really should be 1-0 up. You know, there's good balls in, but uh, when you see this run by Scott Brown, oh, this is the dynamic player they bought from Hibs, driving into the box, causing problems. A couple of League Cup medals, Scott Brown, one of those came for Hibernian in that win over Kilmarnock in 2007. So, Kilmarnock have a Charlie Muldrew corner to face. Bell holds on just. Well done the goalkeeper. If you come and you shout, you've got to take control of the ball. 
decent ball into the back post. <laughs> Cammy Bell gives the Celtic player Gary Hooper a real good shove there, but commanding his six yard box. Long one from Hay. Easy for Rob now. The tenth League Cup meeting between these two. Just one Kilmarnock win in the previous nine. Jumps Harkins, when Yama finds Hooper, Forrest away on the right. Good run forward by Ledley as well. Stokes. Forrest. Stokes again. We get a second bite at this Anthony Stokes. Glenn was waiting. James Forrest. Stokes. Matthews. Gary Hay at the expense of another corner. And this is ominous for Kilmarnock, the way this game's panning out just now. The Usher side, they're getting themselves hemmed in, they can't make passes, and the ball just keeps coming back, and has some decent delivery across the box by Celtic Blues. Nobody on the end of it, but Kilmarnock do not want to be defending this often, this early. The left foot of Charlie Mulgrew again, similar delivery, Wanyama away from Sissoko. It's not often Charlie Mulgrew puts a bad ball into the box. It's a couple of testing corners already in the opening eight minutes. Wanyama. It's a clever idea there, trying to dink that through for Hooper. Parkins. Kelly haven't really got into the game yet, have they? No, and you can see we were told Danny Bowes would play on the right-hand side. We didn't believe that before the game. He's going to sit inside alongside Liam Kelly. Two players in there to protect the back four. But at the moment, Kilmarnock's problem is ball retention. They can't keep it, and Celtic keep driving back at them. Forrest. Matthews. Mulgrew. Ledley. Brown. Under pressure. And now Harkins. Heffern into the right. Shields to the left. Shields is making a good run here. If Harkins can find him, Shields couldn't quite dig the ball into his path. Well, if he takes that on the run, he's one on one with the goalkeeper, but it was a difficult ball there. A three on two, Kilmarnock. Should have made more of it. Brown. Harkins again, pickpocketed him, long from Hay, for Heffernan who is onside, Wilson's the covering player for Celtic. Kelly, and Shields, Bouse, switch a play from Hay, his fellow Kilmarnock stalwart Fowler, Bouse, Harkins, find Heffern, Kilmarnock will try again though, Dean Shields, Fowler, no one in yellow at the back end of the box. Uh, two players in the box, but the final ball just wasn't good enough. Forrest, couldn't get away from Gordon. Well, this is the big moment of the game so far. Oh, this is crazy. You've time to just play the ball out wide. He looks up and he passes this straight to Gary Hooper. And I just can't believe he missed the player in great form, high in confidence. I expected to see the back of the net bulge. No doubt Kilmarnock's strengths are going forward rather than defending. He's looking for Heffernan. goals this season, Paul Heffernan only just made it, he only trained a couple of times before the cup final, a groin injury in the build up to it, on 
Wanyama. Forrest. On his best, Danny Bous. Well, they've weathered the early storm, Kelly. There'll be plenty more to come, but it's Michael Nelson this time under pressure from Hooper. Bous. Heffernan, but he's on his own, Paul Heffernan up front. Yeah, if you're going to play a lone furrow up there, you need quality delivery into your chest so you can hold up that kind of ball. All he can do is flick on to nobody. Scott Brown. Ledley. Brown again. Celtic have been happy doing this season is knocking the ball about. They don't see something developing ahead of them. They'd go back to the forward rather than force the issue. Sissoko's been heavily involved so far, hasn't he? Well, if you know, apart from the glaring mistake, he hasn't played badly. You've got to be careful there, though. You know, any kind of arm on the player's back, if the referee spots it, often it's a free kick. Shield switches to Fowler. Nelson. Eight. Good challenge from Brown. Yeah, just the last two or three minutes, the game's getting bogged down in the middle of the park. Neither team really keeping decent possession. And after the quick fire start, I think Kilmarnock will be quite pleased the way they get. Is going. So much at stake in these cup final days as Kelly come forward with Shields. Fowler couldn't get beyond Mulgrew. Good defending from the now Scotland international. It's help from Ledley. Hooper inside. Stokes ahead of it. Blocked by Nelson. Right off. Yeah, he's just got to stand up there. Charlie Mulgrew tries to swing a leg round. Dean Shields goes to ground, and it's a stick on free kick. Charlie Mulgrew, one of the first names on Neil Lennon's team sheet this season. He's played just about everywhere, bar up front. He was in centre midfield at Petaudry a couple of weeks ago. Equally comfortable at centre half as he is at left back. Matthews. Sissoko blocks it from going through to Stokes. Kelly. Michael Nelson at centre half for Kilmarnock made his debut in the semi-final win over here, United, that went two extra time. Better from Kilmarnock, Harkins. Ben Gordon would have liked that ball just a bit further ahead of him, maybe a yard or two. Kelly. Fowler has to use Liam Kelly again. Shields. Hey. That's for Gordon. Heffernan's one in the middle, so too is Kelly and Kilmarnock of a corner. That's more promising from a Kelly point of view. It's far better from the Ayrshire side. You know, get into a wide area, deliver it into the box, then you've got defenders under real pressure. Kelly's first corner of the cup final. 0-0 in the Scottish Communities League Cup final. Yeah. Well, they've brought Nelson and Sissoko up for this. They're around about the 18-yard line, just out of your picture. Danny Bous is having a problem, I think, with his left boot. He's just fixing that just now. We'll have taken a knock. 
Now the referee was quickly calling for the physio to come on, so obviously believes he's taken a sore one. Yeah, just the back of the ankle. The Dutchman who arrived in the summer. He came with a good pedigree as well, Danny Bowes. It's just the 17th appearance of the season, but he was a regular starter at Feyenoord. Yeah, just, just a bit of a worry for Kilmarnock. You know, you don't want to be losing players early on, but some of the signal he gave to the physio was if he fooled something just a little bit. So I think they'll give him a couple of minutes to try and run it off, but I can't afford any passengers out there against Celtic. Dean Shields to take this corner for Kilmarnock. Centre halves up for it. She was trying to target them. Mr. Soko was up. Did that come off Rogna? Indeed. It's a good ball in. You know, Sissoko's going to get the run. Celtic big players along the six yard line. You can see Sissoko gets the run there up early, but good defending from the Celtic. Second corner in quick succession then for Kelly. Just taking no chances with that as Shields takes the corner again. It's an outswinger this time for Sissoko. Away by Mulgrew. Fowler. Sissoko's still up there and he's forced it to Harkins. Gordon in support. Out there is Matthews as well. It's Gordon on loan from Chelsea. Harkins. Again, Sissoko still lightening around the penalty area. That's Scott Brown who gets it away. Sissoko the bounce. Nelson. Too much on it. Uh, Kenny Shields won't be happy with that. Wants his team to pass the ball, wants to keep possession. 40 yard diagonal, just giving the ball back to Celtic. The 2nd of October last year was the last time Celtic lost domestically. They did lose a Europa League game at home to Atletico Madrid at the end of November, but since then they've been unbeaten. They dropped points up at Aberdeen a couple of weeks ago. Apart from that, it has been relentless from Celtic. And this is Forrest. Cooper will try and keep this going. He can't. Celtic have lost their way a little bit. First 10 minutes, totally dominant, causing all sorts of problems. And I think you can see Neil Lennon coming down to get a bit of instructions on. He won't be happy with the way things have gone. Fowler. Oh, Shields left that one. Yama tried to force it through. Challenge came at the right time, but Dean Shields almost played himself into trouble there. Heffernan. Free kick Kelly. He does well, Paul Heffernan. He's not the biggest of lads, but he is strong. And when he holds the ball in, he actually, he's actually inviting the foul. You know, he holds, hold your ground, wait for the contact, go down, get your team a free kick. Well, Danny Bouse will not be able to continue. Lee Johnson will replace him. The former Hearts midfielder coming on for Bouse. So I guess it's a light for light change, pretty much, Craig. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if he just goes in and sits or whether they do a bit of rejigging because you do like to have the two men in front of the back four just to give them that little added protection. But Danny Bowes, he wasn't moving well after the knock and uh, it did look when he went down as if his afternoon was over. Johnson on and immediately involved. Finds Harkins, Heffernan. Tried to knock that back to Shields. It's away from Matthews. Kilmarnock's best spell of the match these last few minutes. Well, they're actually getting their confidence now. You know, a lot more players getting on the ball, looking like they're up for the challenge. Had they gone behind early, it could have floored them, but they picked themselves up and they've dragged themselves back into the contest. Gordon, that ball had stayed in. Heffernan blocked by Winyama. Still, it's Kilmarnock. And it's not that far away from Shields with a snapshot. It is a good effort. You know, when it comes back to him, he doesn't have an awful lot to aim at, and he's going to be closed down, but hits it well. Doesn't miss that far post by much. You can see it just doesn't quite get his foot round the ball. No bend on it, but close.
recently back in the Northern Ireland set up Dean Shields. He's having a good time under the stewardship of his father at Kilmarnock. Missed out on the League Cup win when he was at Hibernian when they beat Kelly in 2007. Couldn't stop him enjoying the victory parade in the capital right enough. Knocking that one through for Stokes. Sissoko was there. Well, that was careless from Hayes. Sissoko does well, finds Bell. Cami Bell wouldn't have relished the ball approaching him there, has to be said. Wanyama. Looking at Kelvin Wilson. Hard to say, Liam, the game changes over the years, but defending should still be defending. If in doubt, get the ball forward. Kilmarnock will take chances. Wanyama. Rodna. A Kilmarnock and goal kick. Who would be the happier manager just now then? Kenny Shields? Oh, I think without a doubt. I think Neil Lennon was delighted with the start. Had Kilmarnock on the back foot, missed a great chance, but the last 10 or 15 minutes, I think it's even Stevens. You know, Kilmarnock are getting back into the game, they're growing in confidence, and they're getting forward and they're getting men into the box. Beyond the quarter mark, Celtic nil, Kilmarnock nil in the Scottish Community's League Cup final. Mulgrew. Flick from Ledley. Cooper was the target. Between Nelson to Sopo get it away. Johnson back to Fowler. Of course, scored the third goal in the game at Rugby Park in October. Put Kilmarnock 3 0 up. Good skill from Mulgrew. Ledley has it pinched off him by Johnson though, this is Shields. Stabbing tackle there from Wilson. Johnson. Parkins, Gordon's an option to his left. And he slips. Right in front of the Celtic fans. Well, the ball was a poor one anyway from Gary Harkins. It had to be ahead of Ben Gordon. He was on the run, he was looking for the ball into that area. But the final pass was poor and he lost his footing. Mulgrew scored in the Scottish Cup final last season against Motherwell. It's for Brown. Sissoko's there. One Yama. Hooper. He's got 20 goals, so is this man, Anthony Stokes, for the season. Maybe a little bit too much. The option was out there for him if he wanted it, Anthony Stokes. The big question is, Adam Matthews is there, but is he screaming for the ball? Anthony Stokes, he's got his head down, he's trying to beat Kilmarnock players. If he gets a good shout, I'm sure he plays the ball in ahead of him. They've just mixed up the midfield Celtic, Craig, haven't they? They've got James Forrest, who started on the right, out on the left. Brown's moved out to the right-hand side, with Ledley and Wanyama in the middle, and here is James Forrest. Play on, says Willie Collin. Matthews, this time he does get the ball on the far side. Locked at source. Wax that off, Victor Wanyama, Gordon will pick up. Kelly. Sissoko. Well, he's the calmest man inside Hamden Park, is Sissoko. Sometimes centre-halves come along, Craig, they just, they're so blasé when they're on the ball. Well, you know, it's, it's wonderful when you're making passes, but... You know, Celtic should be ahead because their pass that was misplaced 
in that area. You cannot afford to get it wrong back there. Well, he's continuing to play the way he likes to play, despite in the first few minutes as the offside flag was up against Paul Heffernan when he did give it away to Gary Hooper. Hooper was then one on one with Cami Bell, but it was saved that Paul Heffernan clocked offside. Yeah, he's just gone too early. Good play by the Celtic defenders. Stood in a good line. Also looking for Brown, Gordon's there. Wanyama. Ledley. Charlie Mulgrew. Ledley. Wanyama to Matthews. Some more attacking and defending in the first half for Welshman. Gets it back from Brown. This is the Celtic skipper, good skill from Brown, that's fantastic. Great ball in, looking for Stokes, good save, Bell. And Sissoko gets rid of it, only just. Well, Cami Bell has been the hero big time for Kilmarnock so far. Well, what a save that is. I mean, the first one was good. This one, I've got to say, is sensational because Scott Brown does brilliantly out in a wide area. But fabulous skill to create the room. Now, can you get a quality ball in? You bet. And that is a terrific header back across the goalkeeper. What a save. That yeah, made it even more difficult for Bell. Stokes hitting it back the way the cross came. Textbook, that's what they tell you. The goalkeeper's body's moving one way. Very difficult to get back. That is a sensational piece of goalkeeping. Celtic denied twice by the killing number one, Matthews. Getting to turn the screw a bit there, Celtic. Ben Gordon blocks the Adam Matthews cross. Ben Gordon speaking during the week, accepting that he's in the shop window, really, in his second loan spell at Kilmarnock. He knows he'll struggle to get into the Chelsea first team squad. Matthews back in for Wanyama. Hooper. Nobody there for Celtic. Decent ball in from Gary Hooper, but. Uh... The strike partner, Ante Stokes, was very close to him and nobody else, you know, made any kind of run to get to that back post area. He's got a phenomenal record, Gary Hooper. Scored 22 times last season, he's got 20 this season. Not bad, two off his target. Last season, we still got a couple of months left. And his, his bet with Anthony Stokes keeps the pair of them on their toes, you know, because neither are going to want to lose that particular contest. There's nothing to separate the two, 20 each. Given away by Kilmarnock, Adam Matthews again. Hooper. So strong, Gary Hooper. Brown. It's well done again from Brown, the back heel from Hooper. Celtic turning on the style in the final third and they can't get that breakthrough we've played almost half an hour it's goalless Celtic have found another gear you know they're a little bit lax in the middle 15 minutes but they've picked things up again and the game is now being played back in that Coleman like half and ball against Liam Kelly Scotland under 21 international uh, no complaints when your arms up there Kelly having to switch on, they've got everyone behind the ball to defend this Charlie Mulgrew free kick. And just look, Anthony Stokes against James Fowler in that back post area is, is not a match-up defensively you would want. Mulgrew. He'll take this in the hand in sunshine. Away by Hay. Just trying to complete the clearance, Harkins is on to it now. Now Kelly might have a counter-attack on here. Heffernan. Lee Johnson's in terrific space back into the box. Moved it to the central area now as she goes for goal and it's saved by Forster. That's another great piece of goalkeeping. Terrific break from Kilmarnock. Defending a set piece. Look at the bodies they get forward to cause problems here. And Dean Shields wants to cut on to his, his right foot, his stronger foot. I think he just gets a nick there and that is a good save. 
just bounced awkwardly in front of Fraser Forster as it came towards him. Shields has looked the most likely up front for Kilmarnock so far. He's playing behind Paul Heffernan, who you see there. That's Sissoko, and it's off the line. Well, it was Stokes who was there. And normally, it's up the other end of the park, Anthony Stokes does the job. And that time, right on the line, as the header was powered towards goal by Sissoko. Well, he does well, Anthony Stokes, because he stays there, he knows his job doesn't get dragged off that line and makes a good clearance but that's the only problem with the zone defending when you have your three big headers on the six yard line if it's cut back to the penalty spot Sissoko and Nelson they'll win headers in there a couple of major warnings for Celtic just in the last minute or so this is Soko header the Shields shot but here's Gary Hooper I mentioned how strong he was a moment or two ago shrugged off two commandant players there couldn't find his strike partner Stokes Fowler. Wilson easily deals with Heffernan. Victor Wanyama. And Fowler did well initially and at the second occasion. Johnson plays that back in towards his own penalty area. Nelson finds Gordon. Harkins. Johnson. Should do well to get onto that. Wilson pushed back to his goalkeeper. He's testing Fraser Forster there. Well, Anthony Stokes doing the defensive duty this time. And here's the advantage of having players on the goal line. How many clubs don't have anybody there and they lose goals? Stay where you are, decent header. Good save from Anthony Stokes. Harkins, well that's come through towards Heffernan. Good recovery though from Kelvin Wilson. Fantastic defending and it had to be. It's advantage of having big long legs. You know, if you go to ground in there, you've got to time the tackle perfectly. He did. Ledley. It's going from one end to the other. Forrest. Hasn't really gone into the game yet, but this is promising from Forrest. Not a great delivery, but it does come through to Brown. Stokes wants it and gets it. Charlie Mulgrew. Forrest! Oh, and Hooper was inches away. Yeah, if Gary Hooper gets, gets it in there, he's actually offside. The flag has gone up, but good play by Celtic again around the edge of the box. Comes to Charlie Mulgrew, I think he fancied a shot. Poor first touch, gives it to James Forrest. You can see two players offside. Well, Forrest with the effort there, and he hasn't, as I was just saying, hasn't really gone into the cup final yet. Oh, 35 minutes gone, but he did show there when he went one-on-one -on -one with James Fowler, he has that extra bit of pace. Fowler's now going to have to worry and back off. He doesn't want to get involved in a foot race. Allowed in the technical area this year, he was banned from the dugout, if you want to call it that, last year, and lost to Rangers after extra time. Much closer to the action this year, the Celtic boss. Meanwhile, Adam Matthews looking to take a long throw here into the box. Has come through to Hooper, who's got his back to goal. Nelson couldn't get it away, it came off when Yaman Bell holds on. Good defending from Kilmarnock. You cannot allow a long throw to come into the feet of the striker. Somebody has got to go and stick their head on that. As soon as it's down there, defensively, you're in trouble. Shields. Johnson. Kelly. A great ball, he was looking for Ben Gordon, Matthews was there, now it's Brown. Hooper, steps away from Hayes, taking him right out of the game. Wilson. 
Muldrew to Stokes. Good run by James Forrest. One way, then the other, slaloming towards goal. From off Kelly, there's a shout for handball. And Celtic two of the corner. Well, no question of penalty kick, Liam Kelly, the arms are down. He's just standing there trying to make the block, exactly what he did, but James Forrest started to come to life. He was going towards the goalkeeper anyway, I think Celtic quite happy with the corner, keeps the pressure on. Mulgrew to take again. Eight minutes from half-time. Wanyama's up. Stokes there as well. It's back to Wanyama. Monarch had enough yellow shirts in the way. Heffernan was the one who got the final touch on to, to get it out of the penalty area. Matthews to Mulgrew. Celtic trying to pin Kelly back. Wanyama. And away. Johnson. Heffernan, no support really. Have to go back the way. Parkins. Kelly. It's been a strange game of ups and downs, really, but five minutes with him was a pause and a chance. A couple of decent saves and then it kind of goes flat again. But, you know, we're as soon as we get a goal, things are really alive and up. But the big question still is who's going to get that first goal? The passing from both teams at times has been off today, hasn't it? Yeah, well, you know, two teams who are noted for getting the ball down and playing. We've got a lovely surface. It's been watered, but it's a cup final. You know, when you when you lose the ball, you go hounding. Hard to do it for 90 minutes, but when the opposition are in possession, don't give them a minute. Parkins. to Heffernan. The Celtic skipper involved again there was he who lifted the Scottish Cup of course last May. Stokes didn't quite come down Hooper did but that's Graham! Wow! I think he's given a corner. Thought that went straight across, but has Cammy Bell got another touch on that because it's an absolute beauty from Scott Brown when it comes back to him quickly. It's right in his stride and he can't hit this any better. Goalkeeper wow. says he's goalkeeper just got a touch. Oh, he has. That is an unbelievable save from Cammy Bell. Three in the match so far. Mulgrew's corner. Rogner was closest to it. Well, we've got to talk about Cammy Bell. That is exceptional. Well, it was hard to tell he got a touch because the ball was going at such pace off the boot of Scott Brown. But as you say, that's going to... Oh, that's a terrific it's save. Incredible. He, we knew that Kilmarnock would have to have players in absolutely top form. Well, I tell you what, the goalkeeper's there already. Well, that came battering towards him from Brown. And that's three times... He's denied Celtic this afternoon. Hooper first, then Stokes, and now the Celtic skipper. Five minutes to half time, and it is still goalless. Both goalkeepers have had work to do. Brown. So dynamic, Scott Brown. Stokes. He's got it back to Brown. Forrest. Marwick, when they've had to, they've got numbers behind the ball. It's something they have to do. Gary Harkins. Everton wanted it earlier. Harkins, has he managed to find them? Everton was in there. What a bad attempt. Good covering round from Adam Matthews though. The minute you know your defenders are in trouble, your fullbacks tucked in behind the centre backs and uh, he also has good pace, Matthews. Matthews. Manyama. Trying to ping it out to Forrest. 
Celtic ball. Gary Harkin's getting his chance at SPL level, former Dundee and Partick Thistle midfielder. Remember he excelled a couple of cup ties against Rangers. I think people knew then that he could play at this level, but it was Kilmarnock who took a chance on him. under pressure and refused to make it easy he was looking to pass the ball back to the goalkeeper but Harkins just kept hounding him and just next to back leg goes down and the referee gives the free kick in his mid-twenties Gary Harkins he started his career at Blackburn but he'd spells at Huddersfield Berry Blackpool and Grimsby before coming back north of the border Celtic looking to finish the first half strongly. Two and a half to go. Plus whatever Willie Collin wants to add on at the end. Was the injury to Danny Bouse, of course, Kilmarnock forced into making that change with Lee Johnson coming on. Throw in from Matthews. And Yama got the flick onto it. Brown tried to take it on the volley. It was awkward for Brown because he had two or three Kilmarnock defenders around him. Ledley. for Stokes when he was beaten in the jump by Nelson. Ledley. Harkins. Kelly. Everton will give chase just in the off chance. Wilson miscontrolled and Wilson's given that one away. Stick to Gary Hayes. Heels to the left. Heffern into the right. What a chance for Kelly. Good save from Fraser Forster. Kilmarnock will try again though. Brown gets that away from Lee Johnson. Now Celtic go on the counter. Another warning to Celtic. Hooper to Stokes. Final minute of the first half. There'll be one added on in stoppage time. Anthony Stokes is blocked again cool as you like from Sissoko and Gary Hay will come away with it what a chance come on he had a moment ago from Paul Heffern <laughs> Kelly and Johnson Here's Sherman finishing the first half strongly nutmeg from Harkins and Mulgrew. What's the last few minutes? Kamara coming back into the game. Gary Harkins has been the one who's been instigating most of that. No coincidence. No, and I've been looking for Dean Shields to offer them that, but Gary Harkins is also a top player. But I have to say, feature of the first half, the performance of the two goalkeepers. Three great saves by Cali Bell and a couple of terrific stops. Right, well, we're into that one minute of stoppage time at the end of the first half. Brown.
point. They look like a team who are here to try and win the game and, and all credit to them. They're brave part, aren't they? Well, we talked right at the start, bravery, fearlessness. Um, I think they've shown that uh, all the way through that first half. So whatever happens, you know, they can walk away with, with that feeling. One big thing I would say about it, Celtic score the first goal, I think we know who's going to win this competition. If Kelly score the first goal, it's still open because Celtic can come back. But uh, for Kelly, it's imperative they do something in the first 20 minutes here to somehow snatch a goal if they're going to win this competition. It's goalless halfway through in the Scottish Communities League Cup final. Back for the second half with Craig Patterson and with Liam McLeod. Rob, thanks. It's been a tale of two goalkeepers so far. So Bell and Forster are the story of the 66th Scottish League Cup final. It's a Kilmarnock team that haven't won a match since they went to Rangers and won a month ago. So they are capable of the big wins. Celtic, though, have only conceded, and John Hartson was talking about their defensive record there, they've only conceded four times in their last 19 games. In fact, it's only nine conceded since they lost those three to Kilmarnock in October. It is utterly miserly, that Celtic defence. And the second half is underway in sunny Glasgow. Kelly will have taken the lead from the first half, particularly towards the end of the opening 45. Gary Harkins started to get himself into the game. I don't suppose Craig Patterson that Kenny Shields would have had too much to say to his players during the interval. No, I think he'd be happy enough, especially with the way they finished the first half, growing in confidence, getting the good players on the ball. You know, Dean Shields, try and get him more involved. Gary Harkins, I think Celtic will have looked at half-time. They have to stop him getting on the ball as easily because he was picking holes. It'll be interesting to start the second half, just to see if one of the managers thinks, hey, we're going to go after this and maybe just promote somebody from midfield forward a little bit earlier and try and catch the other team in the hop. Hooper. Forrest. Stokes and Hooper wait. Forrest outpacing Fowler. Bell holds on. I think his final touch, James Forrest, wasn't good enough. You know, he's on the run, he's gone at full tilt, he's got to try and get his foot round this. I think he wanted to chip it to the back post straight to the goalkeeper. Right idea from Forrest though. To Soko. Gordon to Shields. Matthews applying the pressure and he finds Wanyama. Matthews going long. It's going a lot of Scott Brown. To be fair, Tanner Matthews, Scott Brown made the run to go long, put the brakes on, then came back. But Matthews had the head down, concentrating on making the pass, and then he went in the area where Scott Brown had vacated. League Cup meeting between these two since October 2008. Celtic won that one 3-1 at Rugby Park. As far as the two squads are concerned, now that's not that long ago. Scott Brown is the only survivor in the Celtic starting line of that night. Scott Brown and George Samaras in the Celtic squad for that one. Gary Hay, James Fowler and Manuel Pascali of course injured the Kilmarnock captain. Still in the Killy ranks. Manny Pascali, the Italian sitting this one out. He was in a bit of gloating on a certain social network website yesterday about the rugby. As Dean Shields comes through, Shields is in! Oh, he's fluffed his lines! It might come to Fowler. Headed away by Wilson. Forrest onto that. Oh, what a chance for Dean Shields. And now Celtic go on the counter attack with Forrest. He was tucked back. That'll be a yellow card, you would think, for Fowler. Well, the very man that Kilmarnock would want an end of this chance, their best finisher, coolest finisher, can't believe he gets through here, gets the break of the ball, pick your spot, 
a complete miss kick almost turns into a pass but it's an incredible miss from there you would fancy Dean Shields to hit the back of the net Kelvin Wilson did get back at Shields but the connection wasn't there for the Kilmarnock forwards Wilson Wanyama Soko goes down under the challenge of Hooper. Thomas Robner inside his own box is getting back to his feet too. Matthews. Charlie Mulgrew. Just to confirm, Lee Johnson booked for that challenge on James Forrest. Matthews, Hooper, Matthews still out there, Wilson, Muldrew, going through the gears, great run from Charlie Muldrew, well, shake the hand, what's been given right on the line, right on the line. Charlie Mulgrew making the difference there by driving past players, then the defence has to reorganise, tries to flick the ball through, it's obvious they come on far, and the referee says right on the edge of the box, Charlie Mulgrew just trying to knock it through here, and you can see the referee's absolutely right, just outside, but this remains a real opportunity for Celtic, a 3-3 game at Kilmarnock, and they try to get back into the game, Anthony Stokes from this kind of area, struck it right in the top corner both he Stokes and Mulgrew who's out there as well scored in that 3-3 game Stokes got two Mulgrew got one Stokes missed a sitter as well in the first half of that game Cammy Bell facing another test perhaps his biggest it is Stokes it's into the wall faint appeal for handball from Stokes Wanyama Another ball into the area for Hooper, it goes down, there's another shot, goal kick only. Yeah, I think the referee doesn't see enough of the challenge, two players with their eye on the ball, and Sissoko may have stood on the back of the heel, maybe, of, of Gary Hooper here, but, uh, you know, you've got to be careful in the box, but that's not a penalty kick. Here you see his arm on the back, yes, so ever so slightly. If we've got penalties for that, we're going to see ten penalties again. Yama beats Harkins. I think it's already happened to Neil Lennon on the touchline there, but at what point does frustration come into it for Celtic? Well, I think the delight for them is you have Chris Coleman, you have George Samaras, so if you're not happy with the way things are going, you have the ability to change it by going to your bench. That's a good foot on the ball, one Yama, doesn't he? <laughs> and then trips over the player who's falling. It's very difficult for referees nowadays to know what is and what isn't a free kick. Kelvin Wilson. Mulgrew looking for Forrest. James Forrest obviously prefers the ball into feet. Kelly. Best chance the second half so far has come for Kilmarnock and they're sniffing about looking for another here. This is Gary Harkins. Johnson. Corner. As well, Johnson in the wide area. I think his first touch wasn't good enough and he's closed down. Didn't see him getting past Kelvin Wilson, so just knocks off the Celtic defender. Gets this team a corner and now, you know, it's a chance Gary Harkins starts. I thought he might pull the trigger there. Goes wide and eventually. Kilmarnock end up in a corner, centre backs and get themselves into the box. Hey, 
Well, he was onside. I was think, Sissoko. Yeah, I think it was Anthony Stokes coming off off the line. You see Anthony Stokes number 10. I think he was the one who was slow to come out when this ball's lobbed back in. But well onside, but doesn't it target? Similar situation to the one Kilmarnock had against Rangers earlier in the season when they beat Rangers at Rugby Park. Piscali was the man. Very similar, wasn't it? Did exactly that, man. Anthony Stokes give him 10 out of 10 for his save on the line in the first half. But when it's cleared like that, you've got to get out. The play from Heffernan to Shields. Harkins to his left, Heffernan to his right. Free kick. Celtic not getting it their own way right now. Well, Kilmarnock are scrapping for absolutely everything. Dean Shields just waits, waits for the challenge, gets his team a free kick and yet another chance to get a ball in the box. Gary Hay and Dean Shields pulled over this set piece for Kilmarnock. Everyone back for Celtic. Here comes some Shields, rocking out there. It's still alive though. Brown gets it out of the danger zone. Now well, Celtic just managed to scramble it clear. Decent delivery in from the wide areas causing problems for the Celtic defenders. Shields for Sissoko, it's Forster. Well, the goalkeeper's given that straight to Michael Nelson. Shields. Straight into the chest of Rogna. Hooper. to feed that one through to Scott Brown. Celtic, I think we'll make a change in a moment. Ki Sung Young will be the player to come on. Neil Lennon trying to freshen things up, I think, more than anything else, because we've been a little bit lethargic. Yeah, I'm interested to see who comes off, because, you know, Key's, Key's a wonderful player. He maybe just wants somebody to go in there and get their foot on the ball and start to make the play, because at the moment, Kilmarnock are harassing and harassing and they're knocking Celtic off their stride. They can't get any kind of fluency going at all. Thomas Rogna is the player who will come off. Joe Ledley left back, Charlie McGrew centre back. A couple of changes to fit in that won't cause them a problem at all. Keeson Young scored in the Scottish Cup final last season against Motherwell. And what a goal that was. of Callum Murray who's the fourth official today just there he looks like potentially being the referee for the Old Firm Derby next weekend at Ibrox a game that if Motherwell drop points on the Saturday at Kilmarnock Celtic could win the SPL title Neil Lennon he's actually moved Victor Wanyama who's played there a few times this season he's gone back into the centre back role key taking his place in midfield great challenge from Mulgrew Inside to Hooper. Brown. Neil Lennon home that substitution has an immediate impact. Matthews. Brown leaves that unintentionally. Mulgrew to Stokes. Forrest. Have a go. Corner Celtic. It's better from Celtic. Better pass and crisp into feet. Eventually comes to James Forrest. Cuts in into his right foot, looks to work Carney Bell, well blocked by the defender. Charlie Mulgrew then again with the corner kick. Similar corner, but it's straight into the grateful hands of Cameron Bell. Well, he's been absolutely rock solid in everything he's managed to do this afternoon, Cammy Bell, whether it be fielding crosses, clearing with his feet, or making three terrific saves. Key. Remember, extra time and penalties if needed to settle this one this afternoon's extra time. This time last year. Celtic were on the receiving end that day. They're on the ball here, and it's key. Brown. Getting himself away from Ben Gordon, who just shepherds the ball out of play. Well, Willie Combs going to have to defuse this, and there's nothing in it, obviously, but Scott Brown, again, it was that word I was talking about earlier. It's frustration, isn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, Ben Gordon's done exactly what a defender's going to do. He steps up across the ball, Shepard's out for the goal kick, then you just need to go on with the game. But they did come together. There was a, a tangle of legs, and the referee fine. He gets himself involved. But that's good, strong defending from Ben Gordon. You're allowed to do it nowadays. Scott Brown obviously not too impressed. Ben Gordon in his second loan spell. Matt Kelly from Chelsea was here at the first half of last season. Mixu Patalainen who's here with our Radio Scotland colleagues today watching on. His former team, he brought him to Kilmarnock. He's come back to the second half of this season. Forrest. Mulgrew. Back from Ledley. Key. Mulgrew. Key Sung Young. Celtic beginning to get a stranglehold on the game now. Forrest couldn't quite pick out Key. It's an eye of the needle ball. Heffernan on his own for the minute. and Harkins together Wilson comes out with it Matthews Brown Key Stokes well we've hit the hour mark no change in luck for Celtic right now Ledley Mulgrew, Mark sitting off just a bit. Forrest. Mulgrew taking his time. It's Michael and Nelson scooping it clear. What's the sense of Kilmarnock when Celtic won the ball just now? They're sitting back a little bit. Well, I think you start to get behind the ball and it just becomes a habit of getting there. You've got to keep hounding Celtic. Give good players time. They'll pick passes. You've got to get in their faces. They've done it so far. They can't afford to drop off the pace, Kilmarnock. It's another loose pass. Giorgio Samaras, he's arguably been in the best form that he has had since arriving at Celtic initially on loan four years ago. And yeah, now the free kick on Heffernan. Paul Heffernan just clicks the back foot there and Yama bites the dust and you know what's going to happen there referee's going to blow up for the free kick There have been games this season that Celtic have managed to win convincingly they've been banging the goals and they're behind other ones as well where they have been narrow victors in games they had to grind results out, and that's completely Joe Ledley. Well, he just back to goal when he got control of the ball. He couldn't find the target on the turn. Well, his first touch is great because it gets onto his left foot, but then he goes just as a wild, wild effort. You know, touch and then find the corner, but he's gone for power and missed by a couple of yards. Cammy Bell asking where his centre halves were because that cut them right open there. It was a simple ball from Hooper to Ledley. Now when a midfield player waltzes into the middle there, somebody has got to pick him up. Whether you pull a full back in or do it yourself, you can't allow him time to take a turn and take a shot at goal. It's not a fixture generally that Kilmarnock enjoy. They've won just one in their last 41 against Celtic. Ki Sung Young out to Forrest. Celtic fans urging James Forrest to get on his bike, to change of pace. He's not getting the free kick, will he call him, pointing that the ball was won. It's all happening in the Kilmarnock half just now. Oh, but very few teams this season have kept Stokes, Hooper and Forrest as quiet as this Kilmarnock back lot just now. They have done so well, but they can't afford to drop the pace for a moment. Well, that might come through the Stokes and has. It is Anthony Stokes. What an opportunity! And again, 
Paddy Bell was there. Not that Stokes got behind it as he would have liked. Straight at the goalkeeper and he's timed the run perfectly. No, there you can see he's onside. Then this is a brilliant cut inside. And then he too goes for power straight at the keeper. Wilson under pressure from Harkins at the other end. Well, in games against the old firm, whether it's Celtic or against Rangers, the other teams have to ride their luck a lot during the match if they are to get anything out of it. In the moment, Kamarnik, the luck's with them, isn't it? Well, if there's a break going, you need it to go for the team. You know, Celtic and Rangers will create chances. They're going to dominate the ball. They're going to dominate territory under normal circumstances. So you've just got to hope that the plan that you set out with this afternoon works. Everybody can keep it going for 90 minutes. You don't lose your good players through injury. And if there's a little break, it might just go in your favour. And Yamata Hooper. Brown. Key. Forrest. What a good tackle. And a few of them flying around. He's done a good job at the moment. It's James Fowler, the right back, who made that challenge, and so far it's been so good for him. Well, I think James Forrest is a smashing player, and he has struggled to get by James Fowler. And just the old head knows what he's about, and is right on form. Fowler playing it right back because Lewis Toshney, who's on loan from Celtic, can play against his pairing club. So Fowler back at right back. Here he is. Long for Heffernan. Bounce is kind for Shields, but the break of the ball wasn't as it was early when he was one-on-one -on -one with Fraser Forster. He sliced it horribly. Hooper finds Ki Sung Young. Stokes. Forrest has a bit of space in the box. Again, the Celtic fans voicing their concern as their favourites give it away. Mulgrew Key Bounce back heel and There is Gary Harkins Well Celtic know that the league is just about done you just need to mathematically make sure of that It's the two cup competitions That hold the key to their treble It's just a goal kick. It was a goal kick. I just don't understand why the linesman doesn't point for a goal kick. Why is he waiting for the referee to tell him which way to point? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but uh, yeah, the ball, last ball comes off Anthony Stokes here. The linesman gets a great view of it. Yep. Definitely off the Irishman. feel the Celtic fans frustration in the stands can't you? Well they're dominating, they're creating chances but they're missing chances and they'll have seen it before where you dominate and you think you've got the game won and the other team hit you with sucker punch so while it's nil-nil nerves will start to seep into the crowd that will get to the players and uh, it'll be interesting to see which team reacts because normally when you're nervous you go back and you go back and you get nearer your goalkeeper and you try to defend if you're going to win the game You've got to take the initiative, you've got to be strong, and you've got to go forward. Scott Brown. Away from Harkins. Mulgrew. Stokes. To Charlie Mulgrew again. Celtic knocking on the door once again. Medley didn't catch that at all. It's just very difficult for Celtic to work their way through there because Pomanek got so many yellow jerseys back, there is very little room, you know, to run between. Charlie McGrew's looking for a ball, there is a run there, but defender right behind him, difficult to get your first touch. The words Kenny Shields, the Kilmarnock manager, used in midweek, were that it would be a travesty if Neil Lennon and Celtic don't win the treble this season. His team, 
is doing its utmost to prevent that from happening just now. Still no goals in the Scottish Community's League Cup final. Forster away. Gordon. To back from Kelly. He. The longer the game goes on, the more belief Kilmarnock you feel will get. And that's something they've come to hand in. There's plenty of in any case. Matthews. Brown. Key. A neat challenge of Matthews. Play on, says Willie Collin. It's a so called challenging Hooper. Kelly have it back, Matthews backed his feet as well. No brood. The left back at right midfield. Forrest to Strokes. So he comes the Celtic striker. It's the corner. Bit of retrospective action coming up here against Ben Gordon by the looks of things, so we'll get to that in a second. This was the Stokes effort across the face. It does well. Get to the byline now, the team of corner. I think Ben Gordon clattered into that, and Matthews on the, the main stand side. The referee let play go on, later came back to the booking. Keys delivery. And then tipped over by that man, Bell again! He's having a great afternoon, I don't think that this is the most difficult save he's ever going to face. When Yala does well to get the header on target, but does the right thing, tip it over. Just come at a nice height and straight at him. You know, and the kind of form he's in today, he wasn't going to get beat by that one. Muldrew, still Celtic come. Still, they can't make it work. Forrest. Key, urge to shoot. Brown, Mulgrew, so they're trying to unlock this Kilmarnock defence, Harkins is there, that looked like it had gone out for the corner, throw in only. Yeah, I don't think the whole ball was over, Charlie McGrew wanted a corner to whip another one in there but has to settle for the throw. Long throw from Adam Matthews. Yama did get something onto it. Harkins heads clear. That'll be a foul by Scott Brown on Lee Johnson. Yeah, I think Kilmarnock just need to settle down just now. Don't be taking this quickly. Celtic have again have raised the level of it. Getting balls back into the box, causing problems for Cali Bell. Kelly just won a little bit of possession again, take the sting out of the game. Bell has answered every single question asked of him in the League Cup final so far. Not a good place to be giving away the fouls, you know. Gary Hooper's going nowhere there, and Sissoko Bastard right into him, lands on him, and gives a free kick. And it's another chance for Celtic, you know, to get centre backs forward to load up that box and put pressure on the back division. If you've got a player going away from goal, just shepherd him in that direction. Yeah, Dieter Van Tornout, the Belgian striker, will replace Gary Harkins. He had a spell just before half-time when he was becoming influential in the game. But apart from that, he's been pretty quiet. No, well, he's, he's not the type of player who's going to backtrack all day. He's a willing worker, but I think they'll probably find if the legs are starting to go a bit, spoken before about having no passengers in an afternoon like that, so get fresh legs on. He can backtrack and do that bit also trying to cause problems for the Celtic defenders. Big Belgian Van Turnout may well have started today had Paul Everton not made it with that groin injury. At the moment it's Gary Hooper who is receiving treatment. Van Turnout on. Denied a starting place but he's got the last 17 minutes here at Hampden Park plus if needed extra time. And his first duty will be to back and defend this free kick. Charlie Mulgrew, they keep giving him opportunities, he keeps putting balls in good areas, but Celtic cannot find a way past Cammy Bell. 
Here comes Mulgrew then towards Scott Brown at the back post, but it beats everyone. Yeah, a shout from Saka, a clash between Michael Nelson and Victor Wanyama as the Celtic central defenders go into the box. You see him at the back post now, nah, he's just fallen over, you know, again, it's a, it's a tangle of legs, no chance of a penalty kick. Victor Wanyama's OK. Only Hibernian and Atletico Madrid have shut Celtic out since that draw at Rugby Park. 16 to go. Heffernan to Shields. Can bring it back though, the referee. Adam Matthews is the player who went down. The Kilmarnock supporters are raging. Well, it's a big decision by the referee because you've got to be careful. He's definitely on side, Dean Shields. But the referee decided there was a head knock. He had to come back and make sure there was no problems. And I suppose anybody who watched Bolton against Tottenham Hotspur yesterday has got to realise that the referee has got to think safety first in these things. I don't know how bad the knock was. Yeah, he's taken a whack, goes down, and the referee, he doesn't actually see it properly. But from his point of view, he figures I have got to go and make sure if medical assistance is required, it's on straight away. Scott Brown finds touch up the other end of the park to further infuriate the Killy supporters. It's a mad rule though when you're attacking in the left wing area, you've got a two on two situation and the ball ends up back at your goalkeeper. Heffernan does well. Fowler, Cover Van Turnout. Forces Foster out of his own box. Kermarnock looking to get underway quickly. Fowler. Nelson. Kelly. Shake for handball. That's been given against Ledley. There's no way Joe Ledley can get out of the road of that, but the referee can't allow him then the advantage to break away and play. You know, he stopped to pass with the arm. Yeah, just I think the referee sees it from his eye. Looks like it comes off the arm, so besides free kick, Kilmarnock. Well, plenty not in yellow for Kilmarnock team. That is Dean Shields with the free kick. Comes back to Liam Kelly. Ah, it's a good hit. Just cuts across it slightly. You've got to take a good first touch. You know you're going to be closed down. Pull the trigger early. Just doesn't hit the target. First touch is good. Half volley. Difficult skill to keep down. As I say, cuts across it slightly high as well. Hasn't scored yet this season, Liam Kelly. Man is eight last term. Not the best kick out from Fraser Forster there. Matthews, little chance of controlling it. Shields. Oh, he got away from three. Paul Heffernan tried to ball away himself there. Forster holds on the corner. Has been given. Yeah, Lines on the far side. It no doubt it was a corner. Another half a chance. Get the ball into the box and to beat good Tom. Tries to take on the goalkeeper at near post. Looks like he's got it. Yeah, might have just been behind. 13 to go. Stay with us. This could go either way. Dean Shields will take the corner. It's not a great one though. Key away. And will try and keep the pressure on. Tossed back in. Forster's missed it. Adam Matthews didn't. Well, when the goalkeeper comes there, he's got to deal with that. He doesn't, and that could easily have fallen to a Kilmarnock player to knock into an empty net. Michael Nelson is on the deck inside the Celtic box. Might well be a knee in the back, you know, when Foster comes late, there is definitely a collision. You know, he's had to come a long way off his line, and you're looking for your goalkeeper to take this one, and Nelson's eye on the ball, yep, yeah, that was a knee right in the kidneys, that is a sore one. Good call, sounds like a man who's had one of those before, yeah. one or two. Yeah, it's six foot seven inch goalkeepers, they pack a punch. 12 minutes to go, Craig. How's this going to pan out, do you think? Well, it's, it's so interesting now. You know, you're, you're looking at the two managers. 
Do you think they would rather go into extra time and have 30 minutes to sort it out? Because if you lose a goal now, you don't have a lot of time to get back into it. I just wonder if Neil Lennon, with Samara and some comments on the bench, might think, I'm going to make a change, I'm going to go for it, I'm going to try and win this game in 90. He's going to make a change now, Neil Lennon. Giorgio Samaras will come on for Celtic. Michael Nelson is struggling. Well, that is a sore one, you know, and you don't want to start taking off centre backs at this stage. Danny Bouse went off early, came back on, couldn't get the job done. Michael Nelson, if that is a real dunt that he's taken, it's going to be difficult for him to carry on. And Kenny Shields may be forced into a reshuffle. Well, Gary Hooper is sacrificed, on comes Samaras. Well, Michael Nelson look like, looks like he's going to be OK. They do have Shednek Krocha on the bench, centre half, the Czech defender. But Hooper off Samaras on, it wasn't a good day for Hooper from the, the, that early chance all the way through. Yeah, I think, you know, if he strokes that one home, the confidence is high. He may have had a field day, but take nothing away from the command of the defenders. They have played well this afternoon against a quality strike force. That was Neil Lennon's second change outfield player-wise. He's still got Chadi Ray and Chris Commons on the bench. Great challenge there from Key. Very good. Back to Brown. 10 to go, Celtic nil, Kilmarnock nil. And now start to play a part as well now. You've got to control them, you've got to stay believing that you can win this competition today. The minute you start to go negative and invite the opposition on to you, that's when you give yourself problems. Kelvin Wilson. Mulgrew. It's that change of pace from Charlie Mulgrew again. What a good one this is. Well, this will be unreal. Here comes Bell. <laughs> what, what a run from Charlie Mulgrew. Round that left side. He's driven, he's driven. He can't see a pass, so he keeps going. Just that final touch takes it away from him and allows Cammy Bell to dive and smother. Well, he's been fantastic for Celtic this season, Charlie McGrew. A lot of people didn't think he'd get anywhere near the first team when he left Aberdeen and he got a second shot at Celtic. And he's been brilliant for them this season. As Samaras has hauled to the deck, Celtic will have a free kick. And they're beginning to put the pressure on again. Well, that sets the driving play now. Charlie McGrew set the standard. The fresh legs of Samaras gives you exactly that as well. And now it's another chance for the free kick. Anthony Stokes took the last one. Drove it halfway up the wall, definite free kick. I just wonder, despite the fact that it's left of centre, if Charlie Mulgrew fancies this one. Kelly joins Gordon and Johnson in the book. And Celtic have another free kick chance. And of course, the usual suspects over it. Mulgrew yeah. with the left or Stokes with the right. And one thing for sure. It'll take something special to beat that guy before he's in this afternoon. There'll be times for Kelly then. The final eight minutes. It is Stokes. It's off the wall again. Second time in a row that he's done that. And Kilmarnock are away. Van Turnout. Strong play from the Belgian. So two from Kelvin Wilson. But Kilmarnock still coming out with the ball. Way by Key. Samaras Forrest Oh we could be in for some closing stages in Mount Florida Key out to Matthews No goals yet but plenty drama Matthews up against Gordon He goes in off Gordon It's a great challenge from the Kilmarnock left back Heffernan to that pain killing injection that groin injury at the beginning of last week He getting it from Fowler Gordon Johnson 
Oh, this will be interesting. Kilmarnock have scored. Six and a half minutes to go. And Kilmarnock, through that turnout, have taken the lead at Hamden and have stunned Celtic. And may well, may well have ended their treble hopes. It is a brilliant goal from Kilmarnock because of the ambition they showed. You see how many men they have got in the box here as they move from back to front. It's easy for players to not make up the ground. There are four bodies in the box. Terrific ball into the back post. And the Belgian bullets at home. Fantastic goal, Kilmarnock. Great play, great ball. Finished by a terrific header. Well, quite incredible. Van Tornock on as a second half substitute. A few moments ago has given Kilmarnock a real chance of winning the Scottish Communities League Cup. They have one hand on it now. Celtic will bring Chris Commons on for the last five minutes. And they will throw the kitchen sink at Kilmarnock, you can guarantee that. Now Celtic, they will drive forward, they will throw men forward. Kilmarnock, they're going to be forced into a rear guard action. They've defended magnificently. They're going to have to do more of the same. Dean Shields. Gordon. Along comes Chris Commons. He's going to replace Joe Ledley, who hasn't had his best day. That's for sure. Yeah, you put on a winger to replace a midfield player. In this situation, makes perfect sense for Neil Lennon. Well, the Kilmarnock fans going wild at Hampden Park. They're in dreamland right now as Kilmarnock make a change. Yednek Krocha will replace Sissoko. Sosoko doesn't look like he's moving too well coming off, so he's maybe got in touch with the bench saying he's tweaked the hamstring, whatever. He becomes a liability. Big Crochet has to come on and try and see out this last five minutes. Gordon, commanding of the ball exactly where they want it to be. They come off. Commandant clear last. It's just a throw in I think that Willie Collins given but James Forrest is riding on the deck yeah he's taken a whack here he's thrown himself in for the ball means two players totally committed to the ball but the follow throughs caught him and you know it's it's one of these sore ones it's the follow through that's you know, it's one in the ankle and young man big future and the international team as well you don't want him injured Well, James Forrest is in real pain and Celtic have just made their final change with Chris Commons coming on. So down to 10 right now. They're a goal down as well, Celtic, in the closing stages of the League Cup final. This is the first piece of silverware about to slip away from them. Is it about to go to Rugby Park for the very first time? James Forrest doesn't look happy down there, Liam. He is really struggling. Celtic may have to do it with 10. Three minutes plus injury time. Away by Gordon. Brown back into the box. Stokes on the turn. With the bodies behind it, Kelly. Mulgrew. Brown. Should be Gordon. Samaras putting the pressure on him. Celtic still down to 10. James Forrest looks like. It could be game over for James Forrest. So even if Celtic do force extra time, they could be down to 10. As they were when they beat Kilmarnock 3-0 here 11 years ago. Samaras saved by Bill again! And again! Unbelievable afternoon he's had. Absolutely sensational. Samaras cannot hit this any better. Goes across the keeper ask the question and Cami Bell has produced the answer when it comes out another chance for Collins hits it well there is a game what a game Cami Bell has had for Kelly Johnson to Heffernan two minutes to go now Fowler 
comes to the man who's got the only goal, Van Turnout. Get back to Gordon. Gordon's still out there. Shields. Gordon. This is one Yama moving towards the final minute of the 90 and we hear there will be four minutes added on by the referee. Well James Forrest is back out there but he is hobbling about, he is a passenger, Celtic are virtually down to ten men and four minutes to go or five minutes to go to save the day. Wilson looking for Samaras. Goes the way of Kilmarnock Fowler taken down by Samaras. Kelly will be in absolutely no hurry to take this free kick. They will milk it for all it's worth and try and run down that clock. Well, most people in the newspapers, across the media, across the week could not see where Celtic were going to slip up in their quest for a clean sweep. At the moment, they are slipping up right here this afternoon. The Kilmarnock fans, by contrast, are absolutely elated. And here they come again for Seals. Pinched off by Mulgrew. We are into the first of the four minutes of stoppage time. Sandras. Now he gets the free kick. Crazy challenge, you know, giving away free kicks because all that does is allow Celtic to just get the ball into the box early. Kilmarnock's last piece of silverware came in 1997 when they beat Falkirk in the Scottish Cup final at Ibrox. They're on the verge of greatness again, but here comes Celtic, far from over this game, turned away by Van Turnacht who has come from absolutely nowhere and could be about to write himself into Kilmarnock folklore. Brown. Then to nobody. Going right in the left back area. Celtic have got to pressure them in there. Make sure they don't get out cheap. Try and nick the ball in the final third and get something into the middle for Stokes or Salmanas or whoever. Brown slips. We still have it Celtic, Mulgrew. Samaras forced to go back to his goalkeeper. Kilmarnock pressing the game. As they have to. Forster looking for Samaras. Two and a half minutes left of the Scottish Community's League Cup final. Wanyama into the path of Stokes. This is the chance. He's on the keeper. He's down. Oh, he's going to put Stokes for diving. A massive call. A huge decision by the referee. He's very close. When it goes to Stokes from Minyama, I thought he's going to pick his spot and we're going to end it uh, extra time. But is there any touch at all here? Anthony Stokes nicks the ball. Can't see it from here, but the referee who's coming down the back there, this is the more or less the referee's view. Oh, I'll tell you what. Big decision he's made. Very difficult to tell from here less than two minutes Celtic have less than two minutes to try and rescue this away by Kelly who saw this coming Commons it'll be a long throw from Charlie Mulgrew do Celtic have anyone who can step up to the plate and save this Commons. And we need the one chance. There's Gary Hay. Adam Matthews pumping the ball back in. It's too long. It's too long. It's a goal kick. One minute to go. And you cannot afford a wasteful ball like that. You've got to get something in the box. It's over hit and easy for the Kilmarnock defenders just to shepherd out for the goal kick and that allows Cali Bell to take another 30 seconds off the clock as he goes from side to side to take the goal kick
Bell clears. Will Celtic get another chance? Brown. Gary Hay. Right into the corner for Heffernan. The clock is ticking. It's ticking away and he's given that to Kilmarnock as Willie Collum. And surely, surely it's done. Kenny Shields looks on. Nerves jangling, Scott Brown clears. It is a goal kick, but time is up. And Kilmarnock have won the 2012 Scottish Communities League Cup. A sensational result. Silver for Kelly. A quite incredible end to this game. Dieter van Tornout is the hero. The Belgian striker, the substitute, but up the other end. Perhaps as big a hero, Cammy Bell, pulling off save after save to deny Celtic, who have now been denied a treble. Most neutrals thought it was their Celtic, but Kilmarnock have won silver for the first time since 1997. And Kenny Seals, along with his players, have written themselves into Kilmarnock Football Club folklore. Quite incredible. Who saw this coming, Craig Patterson? Well, very few even listening to Kilmarnock supporters yesterday. They weren't coming here in confident mood. They felt Celtic would be too strong. I think they sold more tickets for the semi-final against here than they did for the final. But take nothing away from the players out there in yellow. Their goalkeeper had an absolute blinder, but everyone to a man did their bit for Kilmarnock. And that's what they needed today. That's exactly what they've got and they will now go down in history as the team that took the cup back to Kilmarnock. A sea of blue and white there, Cammy Bell taking the plaudits from his teammates. Kenny Seals is in tears. A quite incredible achievement from him, from Cammy Bell and from the rest of the Kilmarnock squad. Every single one of those Kilmarnock players will be recognised at Rugby Park for years, decades to come. Craig Patterson's man of the match, unsurprisingly perhaps, is Cammy Bell. He's with Chris McLaughlin. Cammy, congratulations. Describe your emotions. Oh, it's amazing. I, I feel very emotional at the moment. I'm a fan of your watching, so it's obviously brilliant. It's fantastic. And come on, I've not won in Glasgow 57 years, and I just showed how much commitment the boys had today, and we've done it for the manager. The manager, obviously, He's out of contact, we want him to have a new contact, we want him, so hopefully um, we can sort that out soon. These fans perhaps came here more in expectation, or more in hope than expectation. Did you dream it was possible? No, well, everybody dreams, but you know the realistic. We've won 26 or 27 games in a row, so it's a lot, it's a big task, but I mean, I thought the boys were fantastic. They dug in so good, and um, I thought we deserved to win. I know I had a few saves, but I mean, that's that part and parcel of a game against Celtic, really. You certainly had a few saves. Was that one of your best performances in a Kilmarnock shirt? I am. I would, I would put it up there. I seem to always kind of perform well against Celtic, so it's maybe a good thing. I mean, my save in the first half, I thought it was one of my best I've ever made, so um, it was really hard to get down, especially just bouncing in front of me, so it was really good. Um, but I mean, it, it's just I mean, brilliant to win the cup. Amazing. I can't, can't be well done. I'll let you go and uh, join your teammates. You are the man of the match. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Sue. Thank you. Yeah, an incredible performance from Cammy Bell, a very emotional Kenny Shields. Kilmarnock have shocked Scottish football. They are taking the League Cup back to Ayrshire for the very first time. It finishes here at Hamden. Quite incredible. Celtic nil, Kilmarnock won. What a remarkable 90 minutes for Kenny Shields and Kilmarnock and all those supporters packed into the National Stadium. They will still be at the stage, as will Dieter van Torn out the match winner. They will still be at that stage of disbelief. There's Manuel Pascali, the captain, unable to play because of injury. He will revel in the moment. So will that little-known Belgian who has shocked Scottish football, what a result at Hamden. And uh, Kenny Shields is hugely emotional at the moment, as you would expect on the end of that sort of outcome. Celtic's unbeaten domestic run, which stretched through 26 matches, is brought to a shuddering halt by Kilmarnock. And the expressions on those faces tell you everything.
the treble is off for Celtic. They will have to refocus on completing their title win and hoping they can complete a double by winning the Scottish Cup as well. But the moment is all about Kilmarnock now. That late winner from uh, Dieter van Torn and then that massive decision afterwards for referee Willie Colum to say no to Anthony Stokes penalty claim and uh, Kilmarnock saw it out and they will shortly lift the League Cup. Let's hear from John Hartson and Craig Levine and Pat Nevin with me in the studio as the Celtic players collect their runners-up medals. John, well it's remarkable isn't it? It's a fairy tale, Rob for Kilmarnock. I thought Kilmarnock were excellent all day long. They created two of the game's best chances, you know, with Shields and Heffernan. I know Hooper had a great chance in the first half, which he normally takes. Celtic didn't do enough today to, to win the game. Um, they created several opportunities. They were sloppy in front of goal. Their passing throughout the day wasn't as crisp as it normally is. And Neil Lennon, I can tell you, will be very, very disappointed with Celtic's performance today. How much will they have to say, Craig, do you think about that penalty claim turned down? Well, yeah, the... I mean, we'll have to look at the penalty claim later on. I think it's more about talking about Kilmarnock just now than, than what Celtic didn't do. Um, and, and I think Kilmarnock were excellent today. We spoke more about Celtic before the game because rightly so they were, everybody thought they were favourites to win the match. Well, I think we should do Kilmarnock a you know, great service here and, and talk about their, their play today. They were excellent, they passed the ball well, they created numerous opportunities and you couldn't argue that they didn't deserve to win the match. Yeah, I, I think I think what we saw here was Neil Lennon looking at some uh, snapshots well, of, that, of that penalty incident, the penalty not given, of course, by, by Willie Collum. And yeah, we will speak about that later. And now is the time for Kilmarnock, Pat, and what a fantastic achievement. Yeah, it's a fantastic moment for them. And the, the smaller clubs, you remember every trophy that you win. I mean, Celtic and Rangers over the years, there's been so many of them. Um, and they've all got a special moment for everyone. But for clubs like Kilmarnock, you know, to go up, they will remember this. Every fan will remember this all their life. So it's a, it's a fantastic moment for all those uh, Kelly fans standing there. there. And it's great that Manny Pascal is there as well. He's just about to go up uh, and get it uh, alongside the captain, so great moments for them, and they will never forget this moment their entire lives. Just Cammy Bell going through the what the match he had, didn't they? I mean, he, he pulled off half a dozen fantastic saves, and every save that he makes gives his team more confidence, you know, and they maybe think this is our day, we can keep going, mm -hmm. keep plugging away, then you never know what might happen, and, and what was it, five, six minutes to go when they, when they got that crucial goal? Yep. So on Mother's Day, maybe not the mother of all cup upsets, but certainly a massive surprise as Kilmarnock come out on top against a Celtic team on the treble trail. Here's Liam. Yeah, Manuel Piscali, the club captain of Kilmarnock, cruelly robbed of a place in the cup final squad. He is in and Kilmarnock will receive the trophy from Ronnie McIntosh. The winner of the Sports Scotland Disability Sports Award for 2011. He is doing the honours and will hand the League Cup over to these Kilmarnock players. Each and every one of them joining the likes of Gus McPherson, Ray Montgomery and Paul Wright, of course, who got the winner the last time they won silver. But this afternoon, Kilmarnock are the 2012 Scottish Communities League Cup winners. What a moment for them. And what a moment for the club, and indeed that man there, Kenny Shields, in his first full season as Kilmarnock boss, he has led them to silverware. A phenomenal achievement for the Northern Irishman. As a young coach, he took Ballymena back in his homeland to a cup final. He won the Ulster Cup with Coleraine, and had been to within a point of the league title with them as well. He took Coleraine and Ballymena into Europe too, but this has surely got to be his proudest moment yet. Well, they may well have come in more in hope than expectation, these Kilmarnock supporters, because Celtic have been on such a great run. A first defeat in 26 matches that Celtic had been on. They've had one of the three trophies they hoped to end the season with, ripped away from them by these guys. Manuel Pascali on crutches. It was a training ground incident with Zednik Klocha that cost him his place in the League Cup final. 
There's Crocha there, just at the back. And even the guys who aren't being used this afternoon, still in the suits, will remember this for the rest of their lives. That's for sure. That man's the hero, Dieter van Tornout. Not many people would have even been aware of him when he came onto the pitch this afternoon, let alone in Scottish football as a whole. His name goes alongside the likes of Paul Wright in the record books. It may well have been an up and down season for Kilmarnock this campaign. And although the top six looks as though it's away from them, it won't matter now. Every club in the SPL, perhaps outside the old firm, would take silver way at over a higher league position. What a boost for the club as well, Kilmarnock, who just a couple of seasons ago but in a last day shootout to avoid relegation, they avoided the drop. And less than two years later, they have won the League Cup. It's the first time the club's won it. They've done it in 2012. Well, these moments last with you forever as players. Craig Patterson's still with me. You've won trophies, Craig. What are they feeling just now? This will be the best day of their football and life for many of them, Liam. Don't know if they'll ever be here again. Never mind, there's a winner just being here at Hamden. But this is absolutely fantastic and they should milk it for all it's worth because it doesn't happen often when it does make it count. This will be a fantastic weekend for Kilmarnock, the town and the players. It's been a brilliant day and a brilliant performance. Dean Shields and there Ben Gordon. Dean Shields is the man who got the winner in the semi-finals. The son of the manager, Ben Gordon on loan from Chelsea. Special cheer for Dieter van Turnout, understandably. He scored the winner with just six or seven minutes to go. And Danny Bouse had to come off early in the first half. He's got a hold of the trophy. And Cami Bell too, the man of the match. Kilmarnock have won the League Cup. Well, it was one of those days where Kilmarnock needed all the constituent parts. They needed to perform out of their skins. That box ticked. They needed a goalkeeper in top form. I think that one's ticked as well. And Celtic not quite firing on all cylinders. Uh, Kilmarnock are League Cup winners 2012. Data, congratulations, you are the Kilmarnock hero, how does it feel? Ah, it's nice, but uh, it's not only me today, we did it with uh, the full group, you see, everybody is very happy. Of course, if you can score the winner in, a, in, a, in the final uh, of the cup, it's a personal uh, achievement, but still it's for the group, for the fans, for everybody that we uh, make this uh, thing today. Talk me through the goal that I'm sure you're going to remember for a very long time. Ah, it's, uh, the feeling is incredible. Uh, for, for me today, it's also, uh, like I told before in the interview, it's the it's third time. Now I can win one. It's my birthday today as well, so I don't think I can give myself a better birthday present than, uh, than this one. Well, happy birthday. Enjoy it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. No, I, don't think, I don't think birthday presents come any better than that one. The winning goal for Kilmarnock. He's played just a handful of games for them. Dieter van Tornhout. Uh, so not, not that easy to get your tongue around, but it's one that is very much on the lips of those Kilmarnock fans at the moment. And Pat Nevin, you know the words to Paper Roses. But I'm not going to sing them. Um, but those... Uh, I was just thinking there, that the, I arrived at Kilmarnock the year after they won the Scottish Cup. Two of the players, Gary Holt and Dylan Kerr, had huge big Scottish Cup tattoos down their legs. That's what it means to you. you know, something you want to stick with the rest of your life. Let's hear from Gary Harkins. Gary, unbelievable scenes behind you. Can you quite believe it? No, it's, uh, it's different class. Everybody's there, they're all singing. It's just a great day for everybody. Uh, so proud of them today and so proud of the boys for getting that one. At what point in the game did you believe it was going to happen? We believed from the start, to be honest. Uh, we knew that we were a good enough team against these and on our day we proved that we can score goals against them, so uh, <laughs> we did that in Number the end. 11. And <laughs> Number 11, right? It's going to be quite a night, I, th I think, for you boys. Um, is, it, is it 
something that's been coming for the season? I mean, Kenny Shields has obviously been an inspiration to you guys. Ah, yeah, it's been a uh, oh, deserve this for playing some really good football at times and sometimes not get the breaks. And today, boys defended brilliant. Yes! Yeah! Mari Pascali, let's have a quick word with, uh, with Dean Shields. Dean, um, what a day. Yeah, obviously, it's a great occasion. Um, I think we. I think we had a good game plan, we set out to do the job and we know we create chances with the players we have in our team and we managed to take one near, near the end. There was a real feeling, wasn't there, a real feeling of belief even before this game? Oh, we believed we could win. Our two games in the league against Celtic, I think, we took great belief out of those two games and, and we know on our day we can, we can beat anyone in this league and, and it showed today. How inspirational has your dad been to this success? Yeah, he's been the pivot, he's been the main source of inspiration for all the lads, not just myself being his son, but he made us believe that we could do it and his knowledge of the game and his fine detail of how to beat the opposition is, is better than none and is better than all, everyone, <laughs> not better than none, don't let him hear I said that, but no, you understand, but, but I think we just, these fans deserve it, it's been a long, long while for them, you know. Not many people gave you a chance, enjoy your night Dean, well thank done. You, thank you. Well, we heard right at the start of the show, didn't we, from uh, father and son on Mother's Day, Kenny and Dean Shields, a delighted son and a very proud father as well. He played a pretty smart PR game in the build-up to this one, Craig Levine, didn't he, because uh, he said, well, he said what everyone believed, I suppose, which was that Celtic were strong favourites uh, to take the first leg of the treble, and if they turned up and if they did well, they would have the trophy, but he always in his heart of hearts, believed this was possible, didn't he? Yeah, don't believe for one second that that was what he was telling his players. No. <laughs> he was telling his players that, as, as Dean said there, that you've already played Celtic and, and more than matched them a couple of times this season, so we need to do that again once more. And uh, his, play, his players were a great credit to, to himself, and, and he was a great credit to his players. Um, you can see the, the faith they've got in him, the way they spoke very highly about him. Um, and his game plan worked today. I mean, we, we spoke at the start of the game, John made the point of saying his goalkeeper would have to play well. Well, I mean, I don't think he'll ever have a better match than that, no disrespect, but I mean, that was just, everything went right for Cammy today. Let me Absolutely. interrupt you, Craig. Well, let's hear from James Fowler. James, um, captain, fantastic for the day. Just how big a win was that for you in this club? Oh, it's massive. It's massive. Uh, I don't think we've won this trophy before as well, and uh, we don't win many trophies, so we're just delighted that, that we got the victory today. And, so you can see how many fans turned out today, it's great for them as well. Well deserved over the 90 minutes? I felt so, I felt, especially the first half I thought we played really, really well. Second half we came in a wee bit, had a few chances, but we still created as well and, and luckily we, we got on the end of one uh, late on and it was a winner in the end. Yeah, it looked like the game plan paid off. Yeah, definitely. See, we've played well against Celtic and Rangers this year and um, we're confident coming in. Our forum recently has not been great, but we know that we have to stuck to the game plan. We would create chances and that's what happens. It seems to be a fantastic team spirit at Kilmarnock. Yeah, I think you need that. Definitely, when you're, when you're a smaller club, you maybe not got the same quality as, some, as other teams. Uh, but if you stick together, the quality shown through in the end there. James, congratulations. Enjoy your night. Thanks very much. Cheers. Kilmarnock milking the moment as well. They might. League Cup winners against Celtic by a goal to nil, a match that looked as if it was heading for extra time until birthday boy Dieter van Tornhout came off the bench to head in the only goal of the game. Let's hear from the man himself, Kenny Shields, an interview with Kenny Shields coming up any moment now. Kenny, just very briefly, um, just how uh, big a win was that for this club today? Fantastic victory for the club, Celtic are a fantastic team and to come here and beat them and we haven't considered a goal in the whole tournament it's Dieter van Turnhout's birthday today threw him on because you never know that that's, these things happen and um, we're taking a cup back to Kelly and I know that Celtic will go on to prosper they're a young team and they deserve so much credit for what they've done this season and uh, everyone's sung up the treble and the treble and the treble and it put pressure on the Celtic players, it was a little bit unfair, but we used it to our advantage. Kenny, I know you're emotional, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, struggling to put it all into words at the moment, Kenny Shields, and that is very understandable, bearing in mind what he is going through at the moment. And uh, 
Those fans will be heading down, back down the M77, a lot of them shortly, and it will be party time uh, for all Kilmarnock supporters. Let's hear a little bit more inside the studio from John and from Craig and, and from Pat. And, and we, we spoke beforehand about the great Celtic turnaround this season, which started at Rugby Park in that 3 all game. Yeah. The other part of it, which we mentioned as well, was the fact that Kilmarnock would take a lot of belief from what they did first half in that match. Yeah, I think you've got to give massive credit to Kenny Shields and, and Kilmarnock today. It's, it's their day. Celtic will be here again. They've been here in the past. Um, Kilmarnock got the breaks. They got that little break at the end with the Stokes penalty. I thought there was contact, but I don't think we should make excuses. I thought Celtic over 90 minutes um, was second to, in, in a lot of areas, whereas the Celtic players are normally, you know, they, they're normally on top and consistently they've on such a great, great run. You can't keep missing chances and you can't keep thinking, oh, somebody will get us out of a hole, somebody will produce a little bit of magic. Over the piece, Kilmarnock, for me, they did enough with a little bit of luck and a few breaks, they created chances. Uh, they caught Celtic on an off day, they got the breaks, they got a little bit of luck, the keeper was magnificent. So on the, on the, on the piece of today, you have to give Kilmarnock massive credit and say they possibly deserve to win. We have raved about Kilmarnock and rightly so. Craig, what about Celtic? What went wrong for them today? They missed chances. Kelly took the, their chance that, the, the, that was the most important one. And that's football. You know, you can, you can talk all day about the, who controls the game, who has the most chances and all the rest of it. When it comes right down to it, in certain situations, you know, if you score the goal that matters, then the rest of it is, is, is re isn't really important at all. You know, I know we will dissect and, and all the rest of it, yeah, but, but for me, Kilmarnock didn't, wasn't a team who, it wasn't a smash and grab, you know, we've seen these games with smash and grab, and for me this wasn't yeah. a smash and grab, and this is typical. Look at the amount of players have committed forward, six players in the box, I mean, that's what, 10 minutes before the end of the match. Well, the Celtic <laughs> underestimated the, the challenge of Kilmarnock today. Celtic have accumulated 41 more points than Kilmarnock in the SPL. So for a lot of people looking at this game today, it was a foregone conclusion. None of us in the studio really give Kilmarnock a chance. We all fancied Celtic, but we also knew if Celtic didn't come out and their mind wasn't right and players were thinking about trebles and they were going to be sloppy on the ball like they were in the first half, Kilmarnock with a bit of luck always had an opportunity to win this game. To be, to be fair, John, at, at that point in time, I, I slightly agree with Craig. I don't know if there was a great deal for me between the two teams. Mm. I also would like to say during that goal, that was a brilliant goal. That mm. was a fantastic goal. I don't think you'll see a better cross this season. Mm. I don't know how you can actually do anything about that. Keeper can't do anything about it. And as a centre forward, I'm sure you'd have loved to be in the end it's of a that. Great goal. It well, was fantastic goal, yes. that way. So I won't get too carried away for come out and say they were miles better than Celtic because I don't think they necessarily were. There wasn't much. Had one of those chances been taken by Celtic, they would have cruised away with that, I'm sure. Well, well possibly, but the, the belief that Kilmarnock showed, I think it's important that we, we keep coming back to that because that was evident throughout the match. And yeah, the point I made there, was, I think, was very valid that they. This is a game that they weren't holding on towards the end, trying to go into extra time. They committed players forward. We spoke about it during the game. Yeah. You know, that they, they might get caught in the counter. They used all their subs. Yes. And they, they tried to win the game in 90 minutes, and I'm thrilled for, for Kenny and for the people at Kilmarnock. That they've, they've had a game plan, they've decided to go for a, the win late in the match. The guy that he throws on, it's his birthday. I mean, I'm getting Kenny to put my lottery tickets on. <laughs> 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 the, the word that springs to my mind is bravery. Um, yeah. Both in what you're talking about, Craig, committing players into the box at that late stage of the game, also the way they defended, the way they passed the ball out from the back, which, you know, if things go wrong, then you lose but the game. They, they did it the whole game. You know, we talked about in the first half, there are three chances in the first half. You know, and two of them were, were fantastic yeah. chances. Yeah. So, we, you know, sometimes you get lost in this, you know, maybe the, 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 the one team has underperformed to allow the other team to win. I think we've got to, to be a little bit more of cognizance of uh, have more cognizance of of Kilmarnock's part to play in this game. I mean, they, they they tried to control the game when they had the ball. They made some errors, of course they did, um, and of course the goalkeeper had to play really well. But they were very positive throughout the match, and they deserved everything they got today. Cammy Bell saves John were outstanding, yeah. weren't they? And none and none better than the than the first one. Yeah, well, it's, this comes right in the first minute, you know, I don't know whether we're going to see it again, but from, from Hooper in the very, very first minute, you know, if that goes in, Celtic may go on and win 4-5, you know, because it gives the players a lift, Kilmarnock are down, are we right behind, we've got it all to do, and then from Stokes' header is another fantastic save, you know, and, and for me, that's what Kilmarnock needed today, they needed, because player for player, 
That's why the Celtic players play for Celtic and the Kilmarnock players play for Kilmarnock. But take nothing away from them group of players today, plus the manager and the fans, they've all played their part and it's Kilmarnock's day today. And as I've said, I'll reiterate, Celtic will be here again on many of occasions. They've just got to make sure that when they do come back here, that they're fully focused in, and I don't really quite think they were today with the sloppiness that we saw at times. The league's been a bit of a disappointment for Kilmarnock, the way they play. They, they would, I mean, I know Kenny Shales uh, you know, plays things down constantly. They would have hoped to be a top half team at the end of the season. That, that looks unlikely now. Yeah. But a day like today changes the whole complexion of the season. Oh, it? It, it changes the complexion of the season. They will look back, back on this as one of the great seasons in their history. And again, it's, I suppose the Celtic Rangers particularly, they don't always understand that and see that for these clubs. And that's what I keep on saying. These guys walked out in that pitch today as commander players and can be proud of that. They're commander legends now, forever. So it's not just that it's turned the season. It's actually turned how they're thought of in a certain part of the world for the rest of their lives. So you know, keep them that and remember that forever. They will remember that forever as well. There was also something that popped into my mind as well. A lot of those commander fans there, you don't get here very often. Last time they were here, they got hammered 5 1 by Hibs and still hurting from that. So, you know, I've got kind of a, a, a real happiness for them that they have to keep on going through it, keep on going through it. And it's many, many years and they've got it again. But really, in the end of it, you look back at the players and what they did today. And I, I do, I think we keep on saying the same things. The bravery. I go back to that first minute when Sissoko tried to play that ball across and you thought, what on earth are you doing? And I thought, well, you panic now and they won't play out anymore. Wrong. They kept on trying to play out, and that's the bravery you were talking about. What a moment uh, near the end for Willie Collum, uh, the referee. Uh, you, wouldn't <laughs> you wouldn't wish this on your worst enemy, would you? Having to make this decision uh, right at the end my, of the my, my first thought was that, that, uh, that Stokes had missed the opportunity to pull the trigger. And, I mean, I, I, we've watched it over and over again. I, I, I don't, I don't see contact. You know, I know John said maybe, maybe there's a different angle. And it's hard to tell I from here whether there's contact or not because, you know, we can't actually see both players' legs. Mm, so, mm. and I think that, that that Stokes has missed that first touch. and said it was too close to him. I think he's, he's clipped it. I think he's clipped this. I think he's slightly clipped. But I think where the problem comes from, Stokes delays his dive. He delays going over. I think there's contact, and he takes another half a step. Then he goes, and I think that's what that's I why Willie Collum has, has gone yeah. for the dive. Well, you I know think there was slight contact. But you know he's looking for the hit. He's expecting the hit. That's the big thing. To be fair, I actually think an earlier it was a push earlier on that Celtic mm. fans will claim was a penalty kick as well. But was a good shout for that as well. So, I mean, and that's another thing that you know you need a bit of luck with the referee now and again. You know, you need the decisions to go your way. Uh, that's a tough one cannot take a chance for that. If a referee doesn't know there's contact, he can't give a penalty. And, and again, I think we're clutching at straws. We're looking at, we're looking at an incident that happens three minutes into injury time, and then we're trying to make excuses up for Celtic's poor performance today. You know, the Hooper chance where he misses, Stokes had an opportunity. You know, we, the players that you had on that pitch, you know, Forrest, Wanyama, Ledley, all attack-minding players, Samaras come off the bench. They never did enough for me today to win that game. And Kilmarnock got the little bit of luck you know, they rode their luck, they got one or two decisions, they got a massive decision right at the very end, and they've, they've, they've ultimately gone and won the class. There's, there's luck, if, I could, if I can interject for a moment, you, you do wonder whether Willie Collum, who was behind this, had the best view on the pitch of it. Because if you're looking from behind, would you not just simply assume that a defender going in from the back has clipped him? Not allowed like to do that legally. If, 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 if for the rules of the game, you cannot give it unless yeah. you see contact. But well, we can't see contact here. And the reason I'm saying that is that he's lying on the ground. We don't know if no. there's, from the other angle I can't see contact either. You just wonder why he didn't maybe get a Pull shot the off there. there. Yeah. But he's I think he's tried to suck the defender in and take another touch. Mm. Maybe realise the ball's got away from him. But you're right, the point you made is we're talking about. You know, we're talking about a, a final here where Celtic yeah. were, were really strong favourites. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking about Kilmarnock having luck. I don't, I don't call Cammy Bell making great saves luck. You know, I, yeah. I think you've got to attribute that to good play. Yeah. So there are a lot of players out there today who played extremely well. Yes, Celtic, of course, were below par, but it had to be. It had to be for Kilmarnock to win this game. Right. Well, we, we've had our views on that incident. Let's hear what Neil Lennon thinks about it. He's with Jim Spence. Neil, you've just had a look at the, the incident, which for you, I think, will, will, will really make you fairly distraught, I think. You've just had a look at that penalty incident again there. Was that a penalty? That's a clear penalty. You know, he's not dived. Nelson's made no contact with the ball. 
Anthony Stokes is clean through on goal, about to pull the trigger, and he gets brought down. It's the last minute of a game in a cup final. It could have cost Nelson a red card, and I, I don't want to see people sent off, but you know, you talk about big decisions and big games, we, that one has certainly gone against us, and for me, you don't see many more clear-cut penalties than that. There's a suggestion... Oh, you the my player got booked for that as well, which I think is disgraceful. There was a suggestion that he should have pulled the trigger, but it, by looking at that again, it didn't look as though he had time to pull the trigger. He's trying to get the ball under control, he's keeping the ball away from the defender on his left side, he knows where the defender is, he's clever Stokesy that way, and he's about to slide it, past, or slide it towards goal. So, you know, we deserve better today. We, um, we missed some really easy chances. We dominated the second half in terms of possession and chances, but, um, you know, maybe your name's not on the cup, but... You know, decisions like that at big moments should be called right. And for me, well, he's got that one wrong, completely wrong. You had the misfortune today to come up against a yeah. goalkeeper in absolutely prime form. He had four or five, perhaps six top class saves. He did. I mean, uh, the header he, you know, from the save he made from Stokes, the first half was, was top drawer. But um, I felt, you know, the one Gary's missed early on is a great chance for him. You know, normally he, he's more composed. And then Gary's ruled the or Anthony's ruled the defender second half. He's got the whole co goal to hit really, and uh, he said it straight at, at Cami, and he did. He made some great saves, and even the double save at the end. You know, Sammy's had a great volley, and then it's come out to Chris, and Chris has got plenty of purchase on it. But again, went straight to the goalkeeper. Uh, I can't remember Kilmarnock making too many forays into our half or even our box, but that's cup football, and uh, you know, I'd like to congratulate Kilmarnock. Um, I wouldn't say they deserved it on the day, but you know they've had the luck of the cup today. How, how disappointed were you at losing the goal? Because by that stage, they looked as though there were about five or six men um, in and around your box. I've not seen the goal, but um, you know we got you have to stop the cross, and then once that ball's in there, we we should have dealt with it better. Um, it can't go in between the goalkeeper and defence. We should really get in line with the ball and get a block on it. But uh, it came from us, you know, losing possession when we again in the final third. Thanks very much, Neil. Commiserations. Yeah, no problem. Jim. Well, Neil Lennon uh, did pay tribute to the goalkeeping of Cammy Bell, certainly, and, and it was a, a string of, of superb saves from him. He's done his reputation no harm at all this afternoon. No, right from the start of the game, a sign of things to come, possibly. Mm. Um, you know, normally, normally Hooper, you would, you would think, would score there. I mean, he actually should take it in the keeper there, to be fair. I mean, that's easy. Maybe early in the match, he just wants yeah. to hit the he's, target. He's normally very good there, yeah. Hooper, isn't he? You know, I think 22 goals this season, and... You know, you, you would have said he'd have scored. Stokes does well here, he can't do any more. It's a really, really powerful header, bottom corner. Uh, Bell gets down, shows agility, and he's got a strong left hand to it, keeps the ball out. That, that's the best save, I think. That, yeah, that's, that's a wonderful one, save. Yeah. But, uh, this is the whole reason why I'm, I, I really can't say Celtic were poor today. I, I really don't think no. they were. I think they made chances. I think on another day they, they cruised this because a couple of these go in. The keeper has a great day, exactly what you say, Craig. That's part of the game. Having a good goalkeeper is good play. Um, but maybe at the end of the game, we just so often in the past we've expected teams to wilt, and Kelly mm -hmm. didn't, you know, and particularly Cammy Bell didn't. Even great. this is a decent chance for Stokes. He does very well. He brings it back inside, creates the creates the space for a left foot shot. And it's a weak shot. Again, that Wanyama is a decent header, good height for the goalkeeper. You know, created plenty, plenty of chances. But if you don't take them. There's always that chance that nil nil that the opposition may break and score, which is exactly what happened. And that's, that's what Kilmarnock wanted. They wanted to stay in yep. the game, keep it alive into yep. the closing stages and then win it. That's what happened. Well, like, I keep coming back to the start of the game, John, you made the point. The goalkeeper needs to play at the top of his game today yep. for Kilmarnock to win it. Well, that's right. what you said has actually happened. And when I say a little bit of luck, I mean luck with regards to the Celtic players just not quite being as deadly as what they normally are. You know, Hooper needs to miss a chance. He not. He needs. Hooper got taken off. Stoke needs to have one or two opportunities and missed them. That's what Kilmarnock needed. And as Neil says, they got the luck of the, the luck of the cup today. Just briefly, one last word on Neil Lennon's reaction to having seen the penalty incident. Now he thinks it's a stonewall penalty. Well, Neil obviously thinks it's a stonewall penalty. Craig doesn't. I think there's contact. You know, it's huge in terms of Celtic season. It could have prevent the, prevented them from going on and doing something special, winning the treble. But again, I go back to saying. 
I still think during that 90 minutes, Celtic should have had enough about them with the chances they created to go and win this game comfortable. We can't be going back to a decision. Yes, it's massive in terms of where it takes Celtic, but I still think within the, within the ranks, they should have done enough today to compete the Kilmarnock side. That they've accumulated, as I said, 41 more points than yeah. in, in the big, SPL this year. Big well done to Kilmarnock, Craig. Oh, of course, so we've all said that. and <coughs> You're delighted for everybody associated with uh, Kilmarnock. And one hopes, Pat, that what develops from this, both financially and otherwise, for Kilmarnock means they can use this as a platform to get to get even better. Yeah, what in a season we've having the, the unexpected things that have happened all this season. Um, maybe for the wider sense of the Scottish game, Celtic looked as if it was going to win everything for the next two, three, four years. Maybe this giving a wee bit of hope for Scottish football that they'll get challenged sometime, some, and that would be a good thing. Thanks to Pat and to Craig and to John. The result in the Edinburgh Derby today, by the way, was Hearts 2, Hibs 0 at Tyne Castle. Highlights tonight, 10 o'clock BBC 2 Scotland. Highlights of this remarkable match as well. Celtic's treble chance has gone at Hamden. For Kilmarnock, it's been a sensational Sunday. Bye for now.